I'm Dale Weiss, and you're watching Nasty Knuckles. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor, and former Philadelphia Flyer enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Regaralia? What are you doing there? You at the zoo or what? I don't know. I see some leaves. That looks like a some... mushroom festival here. Now. Oh, that's a mushrooms. Oh, I thought no. they were like little animals. No, no, little, no? little fungi. Just on the road there, just uh, checking, checking out some fungi. Oh, yeah. You know, you seem so far away now. So what's happening? Well, it's because you didn't want to come over. You like, well, I thought you were sick. Well, that's why we're doing this. I, I have been sick, but I feel way better today. Thank goodness. Elvie was sick. I was sick. It was crazy. Monday after his practice, take him back to the room, get him undressed. And I'm like, I think I'm going to throw up. So I started throwing up. And then the time we got home, he started throwing up. So it was crazy. We never had it like that. Usually it's either he gets me sick a couple of days later or I get him, you know. But, uh, yeah, he's poor little guy's been under the weather all week. I can deal yeah. with it. But uh, feeling better today, finally. Getting ready to go. Oh, I feel well. I don't know about that, but I definitely feel better. Um, how you making out? You missed another men's league game and start to get old, buddy. Start to get old. The deadline's coming. I don't want to trade you. <laughs> Rob, I don't know if you saw that uh the text that Rob put out was pretty good. He's president of uh, hockey operations and the GM of uh, <laughs> we're looking to add some new players. So you better get it together because we only got about two or three games left. He's got to send that chopper out to get me and pick me up. Oh, and my God. Drop you're, me off. You're unbelievable, man. You, it's the love of the game, and plus your skates are here. So, Are they? Yes, they are. Are they all teed up, ready to rock? They're teed. We could, we could just need to heat. I would heat them up. You probably don't have to, but I would make them more comfy. You're not going to want to make a comeback. Well, I think I got to. I think you might in two years for these wheels. It's been a year. I sold your skates by accident. <laughs> like you just have an extra pair of wheels just floating around. Like, oh, yeah, you know, you know in the shop here, I've got like six pair and I just wasn't thinking that. I don't know. I can't even believe I did that, but <laughs> I realized that about an hour later, I'm like, Oh, Whoops. those are Riley skates. <laughs> I just sold, but I got you another pair, man. All right, well, I'll be back then. I'll be back. Sunday. I, I know. I know. You say that. Um, Anyway, we won. We won our men's league game. I know everyone's dying to hear. Uh, found a way to win. <laughs> Jeez. Big game. Big game. It was actually a good game. It was a really good game, actually. We had a, good, a lot of fun. Played uh, Italian Affair, I think. And our, our good buddy Jared from AC uh, oh, plays yeah. with them. Yeah. God, he's got a bomb. Oh, he was only shooting wrist. He did shoot a couple one tees, but he's he keeps them low. So thank God. I, if got Puck some, went to him, I just went to the other side of the ice, boys. I'm he not got some strength behind him. him. Oh, yes, he does. Uh, good For man sure. too. Yeah, um, he is. Yeah, really good dude. Uh, so I owe you a little money. Um, our boys go out to San Jose. A team has o ten and one, and given up <laughs> ten in a row twice. And it's funny. I spoke with my my really good buddy Mikey Aldridge. He's the head equipment manager there, and uh, we're just kind of talking about. You know, I, I said this is this has got to be tough, man. Like, you know, it's tough to watch. I mean, there's nobody in the stands either. I mean, oh, what do you, I mean, what do you, it sucks, man. It really does suck to see a team. I mean, yeah. how bad are they rigs? I know you've seen a bit uh, of their. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's tough. And to be that bad that early too, it's just like, you just looking. You can't I mean, rebound. You can't, I mean, you can't rebound. You can, you, you really realistically could win nine in a row and you're 500. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? And, and you're not, uh, you really probably didn't gain any ground. And then you'll yeah. probably drop another 10 right after. There's, yeah, there's no exactly. way you can sustain that. But yeah, it's tough, man. It's, I, I feel for those guys. And um, I, I guess when we made the wager, it was, my head was at like, these guys got to sneak in a win at some point, right? I mean, it's just right. like the odds are. And I was just like, they're playing at home, flyers coming in. Um, I was just kind of making a, a silly bet with you there, not really knowing, yeah. but but just assuming that at some point they're going to squeeze in and win. And then well, obviously they, obviously they did. So I, 
I didn't see that one coming. I'm not going to lie to you. I, they, it's just, you're watching them and I actually feel bad. I hate these guys are in NHL. They're good hockey players. I don't mean to put them down, but like, I was wondering like, what are they going to get this first win if they're going to get one? And unfortunately they got again, they got it against the flyers, but uh, I mean, they're just, I don't know what it is, but they're not very good. I mean, <laughs> you know, and then, and I, yeah, and they, and they're 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 tender. Obviously, won them the game. I mean, and this yeah. guy's got like eight eight wins against the Flyers on like what three or four different teams. This guy, like, yeah, crazy, he does. you know. Like, Maybe I should have looked at that before I placed that bet with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I didn't that know I that either. On DraftKings. Yeah, uh, because <laughs> our good friends at DraftKings, I, I placed that bet. I lost that one along with a bet with you and Baller. Oh um, man, it's thank tough, God right? Debo's in Korea or wherever the hell he is, so I couldn't bet him too. <laughs> <laughs> but, save yourself uh, a few bucks save myself a couple but uh honestly like it man i watched the game i actually I, I i can't lie i fell asleep part of the first period and then when i woke up it was two nothing i'm like what i'm like oh my god and then you know we got that goal back before the third and i'm like ah they're gonna they're gonna roll about three or four off here in the third period but they just they did couldn't find a way to do it and score. they're they're you know we're we're fall we you know we've lost a few in a row here it's uh hopefully tomorrow night get back on the winning track but but i'll tell you what anaheim's playing well man they're they're, they're playing well so it'll be a tough game tomorrow yep yep and uh word on the street is frosty's back in the lineup yeah yeah he was scratched again i think we talked about this a couple weeks ago or a week ago i i still i i thought his play's been fine i know he doesn't have any points but i don't you know He's making play. I, I I don't know. I thought he's looked good, but I'm not a GM or I'm not a coach. So, you know, but uh, I love Frosty. Uh, yeah. I, th I think he's a really good player, but. Uh, yeah, he's, he he's crafty. I mean, you can make some, you can make plays, obviously. I think, you know, they have such a distinct fourth line there. I know you don't like using the word fourth line there, but, um, you know, uh, traditionally a guy like that could maybe work up and down and maybe find a spot on that line. But since that's secured, I mean, he's the guy out, and yeah. he's, he's, he seems to be like the easy whipping boy right now. But uh, I mean, he's, he's he's making some plays. I think it's just more of this play play away from the puck, but we get just get a little more involved. I don't know. I mean, I, I I mean, I just feel like watching when when I'm watching the games. We watch the games, and he looks good. I mean, like you know, he hasn't scored. I get it, but he's he's making great. You know, he's made a lot of good passes. We're just yeah. weren't able to finish. You know, if, if two or three of these guys finish on the passes he's made, all of a sudden I, I caught the yawn. By the way, no, uh, that was not. that that was a that was a yawn. <laughs> no way, dude. That, you're holding it in. I know nah, exactly I just where need, we are right just now. Just need a little extra oxygen, you know. Just need a little <laughs> extra. <laughs> dude, we're pulling that one because that was the that you 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 quivered you quivered you quivered, I quivered? on that one. Well, Baller, there's no slow mo. Now. Ball market now. Anyway, poor Frosty. I start talking about Frosty. You start yawning. That's my guy. Come on, man. No, you have <laughs> no, nothing to do with Frosty. Uh, no, I know. I'm just getting tired of your story. That's all. <laughs> Don't play. So is everyone else. Don't worry. <laughs> They're just tired of hearing me talk. It's hey, like Chief, I... Chief talking about Pac Man back in the day. He's like, let me just pull out my pillow here. And... <laughs> yeah, he goes, wait. He used to tell Pac, Pac would start, to, you know, when Pac talks, he talks normal and then he starts getting down to a whisper. Yeah, you know, he said, and you're like, Why are you whispering, bro? There's no like, why are you whispering? And she'd be like, You know what? Wait, pack, wait till we get back to the hotel and call me and start talking to me at nap time so I can go to sleep because <laughs> yeah. you're putting me to sleep. Um, but I uh, got some good news our big boy Mike Richards coming yeah. in for the alumni game, Rick the Bone. Rick Bone. I can't wait, man. January 26th, it's the Bruins, man. That's gonna be uh. That's gonna be really cool, man. I yeah. know you're in now. Are you gonna are you gonna Tilly? Are you with Thorny bringing it back? Who knows, man? Probably. I mean, why you not? You think so? Oh God. You two, know. you guys we'll are see. lovers. I'm now. only a buck, a buck eighty five, dude. I get my <laughs> yeah, face he, I think he's still about two twenty. Oh, he and I have seen he's training like jujitsu, and he just had oh, his geez. first fight, first or second fight. No, oh, he did, a, did he yeah, really? I, swear to, I swear to God, I seen on Instagram. Yeah, oh, he just he just fought his first or second fight. Yeah, we we probably not. We've talked to Thority. We got to get him on here soon. We do got to get him off. Um, yeah, better to smoke the peace pipe with the guy and just have yes. a nice night. Well, it's not, like you, it's not like no, you guys no. were enemies. It's not like you guys were enemies. You guys were buddy. That's but he's always wanted thing. to fight, so yeah, it was like, yeah. All right. It was great. You, you two, uh, 
I, I, I know I've said it before, but I remember when you guys squared off that, what a fight you two had in, in Boston that night. But I remember, you know, I'm on it. I'm standing on the bench and you guys are squared up and he's like, just like old times. Oh, I remember yeah, him saying, it. I was like, dude, how are you? He broke my nose. I think he broke my nose. In that Did one. he in that fight? Did he break well, it? Yeah. You guys just went toe to toe. I mean, it was just toe to toe. Right what center, a right there. sick fight. Um, yeah. So anyway, I doubt you guys will be tilling it up. Yeah, probably not. But um, uh, yeah, no, happy, happy that Richie's coming in. I know I, I yeah. actually talked to Brad Marsh today and he said he's, he's, uh, you know, talked to him a few times over the years, trying to get him to different events and games and it just hasn't worked out. So this time we finally got him and, um, we're gonna have to get him in the stew. Yeah, we're definitely getting him in the stew. Yeah, getting him in the stew. Potentially a couple other guys. Maybe, you know? I was gonna say we're gonna have, that's gonna be a good time for us because we're gonna get a lot of content out of that, man. And uh, yeah, get some both sides. Get get a lot of lot of good stuff, man. Yeah, from a lot of a lot of old friends. So the fans um, will be pumped, man. Having Rick Rick going back and obviously Rick Big Bone. E, but like you know, Rick, Richie really hasn't made that reappearance. I don't think. Uh, Hey, at all, right? He hasn't kind of come. No, back not not for a game or anything. No, he yeah. didn't make it to the last one. But uh, <clears throat> it was funny. He came back. God, it's now. It's been almost four years. He came into town. He had a signing in New York, so he he. I think he took the train in, so him and I could go to dinner. He came to the game, and then we went out afterwards. And uh, it was funny. I'm like, you know, your pictures in here. You're the captain of this team, you know, and. He, I said, boys want you to come in the room. He's like, ah, I don't know. You know, Rick, Richie. I'm yeah. saying, dude, get in the room, man. The boys and fuck everybody. Guys didn't know him. We we're like, hey, like they, you know, it was, it was really cool, man. I, and I think he was glad he, he, he went in, but uh, yeah, oh, um, sure. I love Such that a humble guy. guy eh? I he, he see really him not wanting is, to go, man. like, because he's like, this doesn't feel like he, yeah, uh, almost like deserves to. I'm like, you're dude, right. like, yeah, dude, dude, you do. You <laughs> trust me. <laughs> you do, yeah. I, course. you know, it's funny. I think you see me do it every every game that we go to, which is almost every home game. Um, I just send him. He's probably like, nah, stop sending. I send him pictures, all the Richards jerseys. I mean, oh, yeah. every game, you know, and uh, it he's it's gonna be cool to have him back and oh, seeing yeah. him in the in the jerseys and and playing in the game. Um, you know, he plays, he plays goalie in men's league now. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. yeah. So I don't Take think I, I should, t- I should totally, yeah, I messaged him today. I should, I should say, Hey, you know, you're not in net, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not in net. Um, but, uh, some other news, like, uh, we were just talking about with baller senators, uh, Pinto suspended, suspended, sorry, suspended, but 41 games Insane. for, for the gambling there. And, uh, well, proxy gamble. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't even know what that was, to be honest with you. Um, I guess it's illegal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you might I mean, want to fire I, up a different account. Yeah, <laughs> you may want to just name. yeah do something like that. So that's that's crazy. Yeah, I um, guess they're just setting the stage and just m- making a making a point, right? I mean, yeah. uh, obviously it's it's illegal and frowned upon, so um, you may not want to yeah. do that. Uh, yeah, but, I, I don't understand. Like, if you. Yeah, I, I don't get it, but the, like you said, just make another account. Just have yeah. your buddy make the account. Get and, someone else to make a bet for you. I don't know. I mean, something. you you have to you have to think though that he's like, what's a big deal, right? Like, yeah, here's my account. Sure. My buddy's gonna place the bets, like whatever, because it is legal. I mean, it's legal, obviously. It's on a, a, a website there. Um, but uh, anyway, speaking of the senators, lose a uh, first round pick for the Dadnov trade. That whole mishap about his uh, having a no trade. Um, yeah. I didn't totally get that either. One. The how does GM that slip is, through the cracks? Yeah. How does that slip through the cracks? If you're Vegas, if you're yeah. reading the full contract and two, um, well, I mean, it is, it is Ottawa, but it's a different GM. Like I, and this is what, two years ago now. Mm-hmm. This this was a while ago. Um, I don't know. It seems like to lose a first round pick, man, that's, yeah, that's tough. I don't know. They're, they're, they're really picking on him. Uh, meanwhile, the GM was fired. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, right. so oh, I guess, man. you know, but uh, last night, it's funny, you know, they've been, I don't know if you saw Riles, um, you know, they've been all over Ottawa in Kachuk came out to the media and just said, you know, our fans are booing us and it bothers me because yeah. we're playing. And, you know, we've talked about this even here. Like we know how passionate the fan base is yep. and, you played, I didn't. It used to piss me off. I do understand the passion, and no one likes losing. But never is there a time where the players aren't trying. And 
there's probably not a person sitting in the stands that wants to win more than the players. Right. You know, I remember Jimmy Rollins saying that to James Van Reems like at a soccer game. He's that's one thing about Philly. He goes, I think, I think people think they want to win more than we want to win. But that's basically what Kachuk said. Like, we don't quit. We're playing hard. Things haven't gone our way, but we're going to turn it around. Last night they're in Toronto. They go into the third with a 3 2 lead. Uh, Toronto ties it about midway into the third. And then G kind of took over, to be honest yeah. with you. They, uh, they, um, they end up scoring three, three quick ones. And they end up winning. That's a big game for them to win. And Toronto kind of needed a big win too, as well, because they're they're not really rolling like they're supposed to. They score a lot of goals at home, but uh, uh, it was it was good to see one G play so well last night, and and Ottawa come up with that win after you know they they backed DJ Smith. They they backed him this week. Hey, we we like this guy. We we'll play for him, um, and they proved it last night. So they just got to keep it going now. Yeah, which might be. Uh... Might be might be tough to stay consistent since they haven't yeah. really found that part of the game. But yeah, either way, it's just part of it. Just part part of pro sports or sports in general. It's, it's tough, man. It's that's tough. It's tough to win, and um, it's just you know every season is a little bit different as far as the ability to to squeeze out wins and and be successful. And when you, one of those years is just not clicking the way you want it, it's, it's it seems like it's just like a just a, a never ending story of, you know, win a win one and then drop a couple and, you know, yeah. you never get that, you know, get the feet underneath you. And, uh, but yeah, you know, you sh- everyone's gone through it. You just find ways yeah. to, to battle through it and all that stuff. Um, I, yeah, I think the biggest thing with them is, you know, they, they turned a corner a bit, I would say last year, yeah. you know, they, they showed a lot a promise. And then this year they're supposed to be better, which I think they are better. Uh, their, their team. Um, but I think people thought, Maybe you know, expect that. Oh, they're going to start out eight and two. You know, yeah. they have it. They're around. Five. I'm not really sure what we'd have to ask Baller exactly what their record is, but uh, um, they look good in the third period last night. I'll tell you that. And I, I watch, I watch Ottawa quite a bit. They're kind of a fun team to watch, to be honest with you. Um, so anyway, it was a good game. Austin Matthews, bro, has three hatties. Yeah, um, <laughs> already. Bad. And not the one bad. I think, I think I saw our buddy Biz and uh, Witter talking about it on their show. Um, like five hats got thrown on the one night. Five hats. Yeah. No. I don't no. think the rich people down below <laughs> wear hats. To the, no. To right. the yeah. Game. Exactly. Uh, I I was I was laughing last night. I saw a lady sitting in the front row, and this may be the case everywhere, but she had a like glass of white wine, mm. like right behind the bench. I'm like, that looks like Riggs two years ago when he was still drinking his white wine. <laughs> you and Lappy, you and Ian yeah. Lapierre, but. Uh, um, yeah, he's got three. I mean, this guy's scoring, but oh, they're yeah. they're Good. very inconsistent, man. Yeah, and um, you know, losing that their defense is struggling. Is really, what it is because they're scoring goals at home anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah, and then they our, lose. They lose. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce his last name there, but the the defender there, Marshawn Hurts. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, um, that was ugly. That was ugly. which is yeah, a whole nother. Story, a whole story, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, the, find uh, their way, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, they better find a way, or you know, who's gonna <laughs> yeah. get the, the coach is gonna end up, you oh, know, for sure, being gone for sure. But um, in Pittsburgh, they're they're kind of, I don't think there's they're not doing as well as they thought they were gonna do, obviously. But our, our boy Jeff Carter, uh, has been held pointless so far. Um, in the nine games he's played and, uh, you know, he got scratched for two games. I, I don't know if Cartsy's ever been healthy scratched, probably, probably in his not. career, probably, <laughs> probably never not. in his career. Um, but, uh, it, it's funny, you know, they, I think they're expecting to be a lot better than they, than they are. But, uh, if you look, it's kind of funny. They're, they're core guys that everyone's like, well, they're too old, you know, get, well, Gensel's not that old, but. You know, he's leading them in points. Malkin's right behind him. Sid's right behind him. You know, over a point a game. Brian Rust. Um, Carlson's even got nine points in 11 games. And he's not a minus, which is, you know, not saying he's a minus. But he, he's he been known to be more of a minus, you right. know, because he's, you know, he takes a lot of chances. So but yeah. it's those guys are good. It seems like it's their their bottom six, maybe, more than mm-hmm. their their top six, you know, obviously Jeff's not off to the start. He would like to be, but um, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. He, you know, he's, he's getting, you know, obviously this is maybe his last year. I don't know. The guy still skates like the wind, but uh, maybe, 
you know, maybe Sully, uh, Mike Sullivan is just trying to wake him up a little bit. I don't know, give him a break. Who knows? There could be an injury involved we don't know about, but uh, I was pretty shocked to see him scratch. Yeah, yeah. I think he's back in the lineup tonight. So, um, yeah. You just got to get on the board and get that confidence yeah. back, you know. And, you know, again, he is what thirty-seven now, and he's streaky uh, too. He's, like he's, you he's said. streaky too, yeah. And um, yeah, he's probably never really faced adversity like this, you know, being out of the lineup, like you said. And the team's not doing well, and he's older, and you know, he's not in his prime anymore. So it could be a, 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 a few different variables there. But right. I like to think once he gets back in the lineup and gets a couple points under his belt and gets going again, it, things will start clicking for him. So. Yeah, I mean they're they're I think they're five and six. I mean they're they're behind they're dead last. I mean they're You're dead right. last place. So yeah. So but uh anyway, I'm sure he'll he'll bounce back. If we know Jeff, you know, hopefully maybe he gets a tuck tonight there and exactly and gets her going. But I think they're back they're in the LA. Map. They're yeah. So um speaking of players getting benched, Johnny Goudreau mm -hmm. is not off to the start he would like, obviously. Um, already been hearing his name in trade rumors. Um, I don't think Johnny's ever been benched or, well, I shouldn't say that he's not been scratched, but he's been, he was benched. Um, his numbers aren't where they should be probably. Right. Um, and then, you know, uh, Huberto and, and Calgary literally got benched the whole third period the other night. And I actually was watching, I actually felt bad for the guy. I mean, you, you could see how much it bothered him. And, yeah. uh, I don't know him well. I've met him a couple times, um, but uh, I actually felt really bad for him. I mean, it's been a struggle since. Dude, you imagine being in Florida. You come oh, in 110 man. points. Yes, he's playing with Barkov, but you still got to make the plays. I mean, people are like, oh, well, he played with Barkov, but you still got to make plays. And he made plays. He was a good player, obviously a really good player. Yeah. Um, he gets there. It's a totally different team. Obviously, they – you know, I don't know, but uh, I actually felt really bad for him the other night watching him. Uh, some guys are probably like, whatever. He's making, you know, he signed his big deal. He's making his money, but you can tell he wants to play and he wants to make a difference in the game. Um, yeah. To me, to me. That's the way it's yeah. Seems. Yeah. Lots of, lots of trade rumors going on. Yeah. You, you're saying that there, you saw something that actually happened, but I, don't I know thought I it. <laughs> You know, so there's all these accounts now that things are popping up on my feeds. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm like is this, wait, is this, well, who do you get traded for if he got traded? Like, yeah. it's not saying any of that, but it said he was traded to Columbus. And oh, I was obviously speculating was, for yeah, Johnny, Johnny G straight yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I would Johnny not have a no trade? I uh, wouldn't both of them. Well, I don't know about Hoover though, because I don't think he wanted to be in Calgary in the first place, oh, but right, he did yeah. sign that deal. So, uh, who knows, man, yeah. who knows, but, uh, maybe we'll turn it around. And then another guy I kind of feel for because, uh, Jack Campbell, man, <laughs> put on waivers. What a tough, he, what a tough yeah, man, he's got four, four years left in, in, you know, including this year, um, $5 million cap hit. So yeah. at least he's making money. Yeah. That's uh, it. Right? you know, but, no escrow uh, down in the minors, he, no escrow, but, uh, <laughs> just feel for the guy. Cause I've only heard really good things about him. I don't know. It's him. Terrible. Um, but man, I tell you what, the start Edmonton's had, whew, wow. Yeah. Uh, I think we be... talked about that a little bit last, last week, but, uh, they're just, man, it's not, uh, it's just not clicking at all there. No, no, it's, it's a shame. And again, this is whether it's like Ottawa or Calgary, it's like no, nothing fun about those situations, you know, everyone right. knows they need to be better and win games, but it's so early and they're not having success. Like it just seems like. It's like a never-ending year, and yeah, I mean, you got a long ways to go yet. Uh, I don't know what the answer is there. I mean, the, the defense core, obviously, the goaltending. There's just there's a lot of holes, and yeah, in, in, you want. In I there. mean, it's I've been trying to pay more attention to the West. Uh, you know, the later games, just because of that, watching just to see, like, not that I'm going to be able to break it down and figure it out, but like, it's it's crazy. Like, and you know. Riles, you probably at some point were on a team where like you just can't get a break. Yeah. Like, I mean, things are just, it starts snowballing, man. And it's, it's just not fun. Then it, then it becomes where it's not fun to go to the rink. It's hard oh, to go yeah. to the rink when you're losing all the time and, you know, you have all these high expectations. Um, yeah. It's just, I can't imagine right now in Edmonton, maybe they pull it together here, but uh, we, we've, I've said this to you a bunch of times and it's probably getting old. People don't even want to hear it, but when does Connor McDavid say, Hey, like 
I want to lift the cup at some, or I want to have a ch- chance at the cup yeah. and maybe they still do. Maybe I'm jumping way ahead of myself, but man, here's another year. Like if it keeps going like this, dude, they're not even going to make the playoffs. Oh, you know, right. they, they've gotten to where they're making the playoffs, you know, and uh, they were kind of fun to watch last year. Remember that, yeah. that series with LA? I mean, it was great. The, all mm-hmm. the scoring and everything, but uh, I guess we have to wait and see, give it a few weeks to see if they can turn it around. But um, some, some, uh, Bad news, uh, Freddie Anderson, uh, blood clots, man. Uh, that's that's always tough. You know, we had chemo had that situation, yeah. and even our good buddy uh, Pete Singoni has that's dealt right, with that yeah. his whole career. Jeez. You know, and I even know. now in his men's league career, he's had to deal with it. Scary situation, man. Yeah, um, wish him so, the best on that yeah, one. Thank God, wish, it is scary. Yeah, I wish wish him the best. Hopefully, he can, uh, get that uh, squared away because that's a that's a really scary thing. Yep. Uh, yep. our buddy Nick Grossman. Yeah, grosser. Yeah, new coaching Assistant job. Coach, yeah, coaching job. We got to reach out to old Gross Daddy. I messaged him on Instagram, but uh, you, yeah, yeah. C- congratulations to Grossy. Yeah, it'll be a great little uh, position for him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's obviously a great he's guy, a good buffer uh, zone for, for players, yeah. and he, he, a friendly guy, approachable guy. That's right. I was gonna say I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was gonna say like he's a guy where you're like what a great assistant coach he would be. Yeah, exactly. Not saying he could be a head coach if he wanted, but he would be one of the best assistants to me just because of the way he is. Mm-hmm. Um, just such a happy guy and, and a good guy. Um, so I'm happy for him, man. He's a, he needs to be in hockey, I think. Cause he was, yeah. I, I really, I really like him. So. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Perfect spot for him. Congrats. Grocer. Yep. My man. My man. Ready to rock your ass. Let's do it. 133. Here we go with Dale Weiss. Weezy. Here we go. Before we start this interview, here is a quick message from our good friends at DraftKings. Riggs, you feel that chill in the air, brother? I sure do. Well, I'll tell you what. As we know, the NHL is back, and it's time to hit the ice. DraftKings Sportsbook is getting new customers ready for puck drop with an epic offer. Score 200 bucks instantly in bonus bets when you bet just $5 on hockey. Now, that's worth a Sally Riggs. Yoo-hoo. I'm looking at tonight's game with the Philadelphia Flyers at Anaheim, and they are a minus 205 favorite. So do yourself a favor. Bet the action on the ice with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code KNUCKLES. New customers can get 200 bucks instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on hockey. That's code KNUCKLES only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPENY or text HOPENY, which is 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available. For problem gambling, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, KS, licensee partner, Golden Nugget Lake, Charles, LA, dot 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in ONT. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash hockey terms for eligibility and deposit restrictions terms and responsible gaming resources nhl and the nhl shield are registered trademarks of the national hockey league copyrights of the nhl 2023 all rights reserved welcome back i'm riley cote and i'm derek Sotomayor. this week we are super excited to have a good friend of ours join the show former draft pick of the new york rangers in round four 111th overall in the 2008 nhl entry draft and I will say the number one draft pick from an NHL player's wife, Miss Lauren. Please <laughs> welcome my buddy, Riles' buddy, friend of the show, Dale Weiss. What's up, brother? Hey, what an intro. That's probably the best <laughs> intro I think I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Definitely. Lauren I'm sorry, but she knows I she knows I got oh, the she flames sends her going. Love. She sends yeah, her love. Yeah. She said to say hi. Oh, she's awesome, man. <laughs> Whole family's yeah, awesome, good. man. Miss you, brother. How you been? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. It's great to see your guys' faces. Uh, you know, I, I I think about some of my Philly times when I think back about it, man. And you're uh, 
you're right up there in the uh, in the memory book, man. So it's good to see you again. Yeah, man. You too, bro. It's a shame I haven't seen you in, in so long here, but uh, I know you're up there in the tundra right now near Riles. You guys are uh, Winnipeg yeah. boys. That, that weather's a little rough right now or what? <laughs> I, man, it's been a little uh, a little too early for snow for me. You know, I've, I've only spent, um, well, I was in Sweden two years ago, so I've only been here for really two winters. One was a record year for the least amount of snow and one was a record year for the most amount of snow in like a hundred years. So I'm hoping I'm somewhere about right. <laughs> yeah. Like we're so much snow already. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping it kind of tails off. Hasn't been that cold though. So not too bad. Awesome. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually, it's actually w- warm here right now. It last, is yeah, it was 65 days. degrees today. Yeah. It's oh, crazy. Um, so what, what are you up to? Weez? What, what's going on right now? Yeah. So I, uh, I'm coaching two teams right now. I got, uh, my, one of my twins, my four-year-old boy, I'm coaching him. Uh, awesome. and then I'm coaching my, my, uh, 10 year old son too. So coaching two teams, um, is, is literally what I do every day. Like we have, my daughter plays too. My daughter's eight. So she, Jordana plays. So we have U seven practice, U nine practice and lactic bonding, which is perfect. Cause they're back to back. So I don't have to travel anywhere. And then we got U 11 on the off day. So I'm at the rink, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for practices playing a little beer league on Fridays. And then we got oh. games Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. So, wow. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm at schedule. The, I, sp- I spent a lot of time there. So it's, uh, I, I did it last year. I coached one, uh, my U 11, my son, uh, I didn't play a lot myself last year, but it was kind of a good way to break it up being at the lake. Um, you know, we're kind of 20 minutes outside of the town. I'm about an hour and a half from Winnipeg. So you got to break up the winter, man. Cause it gets a little dark out here and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you get the fairies a little bit out here. So are you heading towards Kenora or the other way, or is it not even yeah, close? Uh, I'm, I'm North. I'm North. Oh, you're North. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'd be about probably That's two East, hours. right? Kenora, where Richie is, yeah. is East. That's Riggs? East. Direct. That's yeah, East. He not, yeah. Riggs doesn't remember. He hasn't been, he finally got <laughs> back remember. to Winnipeg. It's the first time he's been back this summer. He got yeah. to go back home. Well, yeah. Well, COVID years. fucked everything yeah. up. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. Oh, yep. man. It's so. Nice get back. Yeah. So you guys are building a home, right? You're uh, building a new home there and everything. Yeah. So you know what, when, when I finished, um, you know, in the bubble there in 2020, I was going to go to Europe for a little bit and we can get into it a little later. Um, but I, I was kind of planning to just live at the lake in the summer, bring my family with me to Europe, play for another couple of years. And, uh, and then, you know, once we were finished, we'd kind of figure out where we wanted to go. Only lasted uh, three quarters of a season there. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is enough. Yeah. And, uh, so, so then we were, we were back at the lake and we're like, okay, we'll give it a try. And then I, I just, I need to be in the mix a little bit. Um, you know, like I love living in this, this town. It's a great community and everything. And I love the people, but, um, I, I just, I gotta be in the city a little bit. So we started looking at places, found a lot about two years ago, started building in February. And, uh, I'm hoping I was hoping to be in by Christmas. I'm thinking probably late spring, early summer, we should be in. Nice. nice. That's, That's right. Awesome. Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah, I'm in I'm in East St. Paul, so literally ten minutes yeah. outside of Winnipeg, but it's sure. essentially Winnipeg. Yeah, great. Uh, you know, you 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 just brought up the bubble. Um, you, you were with Montreal there. You played you played against the Flyers. Uh, how, what was the bubble like? Was it just awful, or was it, you know, it was yeah, it was it was it was cool. Like it was weird for me, right? So that year, I started in the minors for the first three months. I got called back up January first, playing really well up until March, you know, kind of, yeah, I was in the minors for three months. I thought, okay, my career is over. I'm going to go to Europe. This is probably it. Then I get back and start playing while well, things start rolling. COVID happens. I'm like, okay, like, I guess I'm, I'm done again. And yeah. uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to get the call back to play. I didn't know what was going to happen for the summer. I ended up getting called back. Um, and then it was kind of good for me, right? Like it's another chance to kind of stick around a little bit. And um, yeah. it was okay in Montreal. Like you come to practice, you hang around, everything's kind of the same at the rink. Uh, Minus getting your nose jabbed every single day. Every was, single day. Oh yeah, what a pain. It was it was a little annoying, but um, then you go back to the apartment after. It's kind of boring. I was almost happy to get in the bubble because you're closer to the team. Everybody's right beside each other in the rooms. But it was it was still kind of weird. Like you know, you're middle of the summer. There's no fans. I don't know. It it, it felt weird. It felt weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was weird even watching. Just you know, no one there. It was good that it was, I was happy hockey was on and they obviously gave us something to do and talk about, but, uh, it was just, it's just odd. And then the next season when they started, you could have 3,500 or 5,000 people go to the games. I'd take Elvis to the games. It was just strange, man. 
just really strange. But uh, that was, <clears throat> I was with the Flyers half of that season right before COVID hit. I wasn't allowed to go back. Thanks, Chuck. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> so I missed you know, Chuck a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, I, um, you know, in the end, it kind of hit me. My son, yeah, you know, Elvi, uh, Elvis yeah. said to me the one night we were watching and the Flyers had moved along. They were having a really good year. That second half of the season, man, oh, they were, they were insane. fire. They were, I fire. think if they didn't stop, man, they, they probably have a good chance to go the distance. Yeah. They were, they were unreal. And even when they started the, that first three games, they beat everybody to get that number one seed. And they yeah. were just, they were just playing really well. And, and of course I'm pulling for them, but it's all the boys, you know, and I, I was FaceTiming with the guys while they were there and I saw them a lot before they left. Uh, they were coming over in the pool. We were, coming, we were getting in the pool every day because a it was, it was yeah, it was summer. Um, oh, so I got to it. see them all before they left. But then I remember Elvis saying to me the one night, so I'm sorry, daddy, you can't be there with the boys. And I said, you know what, buddy, they've been gone almost seven weeks. I wouldn't have seen you for seven weeks. And yeah. I'd rather sit here and watch this with you. Plus, I'm getting paid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I got paid for two more years, so that part of it was good. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it just seemed crazy, and I did feel bad for you guys that were going there, <clears throat> just because you are away. It's it's one thing to go on the road for you know we all like going on the road. Let's let's not lie. It's it's nice yep. to get away, be with the boys, and have some fun, which we did while you were here in Philly uh, quite yep. a few times. We were able to do that, but. Um, you know, I felt bad a little bit for the guys because, you know, you couldn't see your family. I, I remember Brian Elliott, who was with the Flyers, Moose, um, his grandpa was sick and he was in Canada and they wouldn't let him leave to go see him. Really? And I mean, I just thought that's that's a little ridiculous, but it is what it is. But uh, you got to play in it, something you could always say you did, because hopefully that doesn't happen again. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't see that happen again. I really hope it doesn't. Um, but just touching on that, like. You know, I think the whole in total, I was probably away for about three and a half months, which is the longest I've ever gone without seeing my family. And that was kind of like a, a look into how it was going to be for the next year. I was going to go to Switzerland. I had my deal yeah. in place. And then the day after I left the bubble, they're calling. They're like, hey, we need you here in three days. And I wasn't oh. going to bring my family. And I was like, I, wow. I, I, was, like, you? I was like, I I can't do this. I was like, I just won't play because I, I, I won't yeah. be able to do it. Yeah. And yeah, and I heard a couple of guys that ended up going to that team. I won't mention the team name, but they didn't end up getting paid that year. So I was kind of happy. Oh, wow. my oh, God. Yeah, that would have yeah. been devastating. Yeah, Ooh, not man. only did I go away from my family for eight months, I didn't. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, that's, that's a crazy. grind. That is tough on the family unit for sure. Yeah. That, that's, oh, yeah, that's, that's no good. You made the right decision for sure. Mm -hmm. That would wear on you. Yeah, and you know what? Like, and it, I, I probably should have listened to my gut too. I should have just stayed retired because I ended up going back to Sweden. And even when I signed in Sweden, it was like, I didn't have a good feeling about it. I was like, I didn't really want to go. And I wasn't bringing my family off the start. I should have just listened to my gut and not went anyways. Yeah. Well, at least you, I mean, you, you left. So at least you went to see, where were you exactly in Sweden? I was in like, like almost a Southern, like as South in Sweden as you could go. I was, I was way on the bottom of Sweden. Beautiful country. Great well, people. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough. And I think you'll hear, I've heard a lot of guys say it where, you know, you go from playing in the NHL and you go over to Europe and it's kind of like going, going back to junior again, but just not as fun. Um, <laughs> it's not as fun. Yeah. Like you're traveling on buses for like five hours on game day. Like we were stopping Ooh. at gas stations and stuff. I'm getting in, you know, Swedish beds. They have the like two singles. They put them together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, that's fine if it's just one person, but I got a roommate and we like spread the beds a little bit and like, Oh it was just ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. I really Every, couldn't believe something. It's funny you said that too, because when I, I did a few world championships with Team USA, and <clears throat> I remember going to Slovenia, and I'm not very big. Obviously, you know, I'm only you know five eight if I'm lucky with my shoes on. But I mean, the bed was small. I'm like, how did, how are the boys sleeping in these beds? And then even in Sweden, we stayed in the Globe. I don't know if you ever went to the Globe. Uh, nope. That's right in Stockholm. Uh, okay. We we played there and there's a hotel uh, attached to it. And even in that, that place, the, the bed was, the rooms were tiny. The beds were tiny. Um, yeah. I'm sure there were nicer places maybe, but uh, yeah, that, I have heard that though, what you're saying. Yeah. And it just kind of everything that goes along with things that you're used to just, you know, like simple training stuff. Like, you know, a couple of days a week, we didn't have trainers. We didn't have a team doctor. Like one time <laughs> I, I sprained my knee. 
last game of exhibition when I first went there. And I knew right away, like I've done it before. So I knew what it felt like. And I was like, hey, this is a sprained MCL. And the doctor's wiggling it around. And I'm like, man, let's stop. That hurts. He's like, ah, it feels okay to me. You want to give it a try? I was like, no. No, <laughs> no I don't. I could not give it a try. It's like I got hammered. From <laughs> my eye is open. My head's pounding. I, could, I can't even see out of this eye. And he's like, yeah, you should be good to go here. And I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. do I have any? Wow. Do I have to do anything? He's like, no, you're good. Go ahead. Wow. I expect that in the KHL, maybe not the Swedish league. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It was, it was and, and and maybe it was different on different teams. Like, I know the team I was on, they were, uh, might have been their third year in the top league. So maybe it was different on other teams. But, you know, some of the accommodations, um, you know, haggling over equipment and stuff. Like, I know yeah. when I left the manager, I, I had like a brand new pair of skates. And the GM like came and took my skates out of my bag. And I was like, go for it. Like, I'm not playing yeah. anymore. So, <laughs> wow. I mean, custom skates like i don't know what they're gonna do with them but it was yeah just little crazy. stuff like that. raffle them off yeah maybe so is it just an accumulation of all that stuff that you just like had enough yeah i think so i think so yeah. like you know I, I wanted to bring my family and i showed up and the gm picks me up and is like two-seater and uh and i was like you didn't even know my family wasn't coming like what if i yeah. would have brought my family here he's like well we would have figured it out and i was like wow. okay yeah. and then we go to the apartment and you know i had a two bedroom apartment where there's only one bed. Uh, there was like no window coverings or everything. Again, I was like, you didn't even know I wasn't bringing my family right now. Like, what, <laughs> yeah. right now? like, what do you want me to put the four kids in one God, room? Like, sounds like a kids? shit show. Yeah. I know. Okay. And, and, uh, oh, it was, it was, yeah. So, and the team I was playing with, we had to walk down the street to the local gym. So it's like show up in the morning and you have a team meeting and then we walk down the street to the local gym. And we work out down there and then we walk back, you know, it's cold, it's freezing cold. And then, uh, you get on the ice and practice. Oh wow. My God. Wow. Yeah. It does sound like a rough version of juniors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The junior program's got much more going on than that. A hundred percent. And it was like, especially now. Yeah. yeah, oh, I'm I was, kidding. yeah it, was, it was tough. It was, it was, uh, yeah, I reached my limit pretty quick there. <laughs> Here's a quick break with a message from America's number one meal kit. Turn to HelloFresh Market for yummy add-ons and enjoy the season's limited time fall flavors lineup. Feast on desserts like apple cider cake with caramel sauce or please a crowd with appetizers like the barbecued pulled pork nachos. Nast, I know you like those. My God, I, I do. And I made them and they're <laughs> unbelievable. Oh man, don't take those away from Nasty. You'll bite your arm off. And don't forget the mini pumpkin cheesecake. Perfect for a me time treat. We all know HelloFresh takes the hassle out of meal time, but did you know it can also save you money? HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout, so that means you get all your easy home cooked meals on the table and more money back in your pocket. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 knuckles and use code 50 knuckles for 50% off plus free shipping. That is HelloFresh.com slash 50 knuckles and use code 50 knuckles for 50% off plus free shipping. Go check it out, Nas. I I have been checking it out. I also <laughs> made, I just have to say, I also made the chicken Caesar wraps. <laughs> Kids thought I was like the best cook ever. Don't tell start your own cooking show, Nast. I got a chef hat now. Ooh, let's do it. Jumping backwards a little bit, your your NHL de debut, ironically, is against the Flyers. You're playing for the Rangers. You almost scored twice in that game, too. Um, I think you fought car bomb that night, if I'm not mistaken. But uh yep. what was it like? What was Torts like? Oh, it was awesome. Um, you know, because I, I had a that training camp when he cut me, I told him I should have made the team, and me and him kind of got into it a little bit. And uh imagine was, that. <laughs> yeah. He probably loved it. He oh, probably yeah, he loved, loved it. it. Yeah. Oh, and and, and like I kind of had a I don't know if that was the inkling in the back of my head. I was like, maybe I should just tell him the fuck off and tell him like how bad I want to be on the team. And he's me and him start getting into it. And he's like, Well, you didn't fight in training camp. And uh it was like there was like two games left in exhibition, and I ended up going down for like three days and getting called back up. And you could I don't know, people listening, you can go on YouTube and watch. Uh, I ended up like Three minutes into the game, like Ottawa's got their full roster. Spezza gets the puck. I beeline for the bench. I'm cross checking this guy. Uh, man, they had some other tough guys in there too. I ended up fighting Felino, and it was like he comes in after the first period of that game, and he's like fist pumping me. He's like, "That's what I want to see. I love it." He ends up sending me down after the game because it was end of exhibition. I was going back, 
and he was just loving it. He's like, I love, that's what I need. And I was like, well, you should have just told me. If you wanted me to fight, yeah. I'd love, I'll do it. You should have just told me. So yeah. in the first game, I, I was like, look in the Flyers roster. I got called out the day before and I was like, okay, who can I fight? Like, okay, Carcello, like led the league in fights last year, led the league in penalty minutes. Like I got to fight him. And um, so I remember towards right before the game, he, uh, he was looking around. He's like, Weezer, where are you? It's like, Weezer, leave, Car- leave Carcello alone. Oh God! Ah, fuck! And I'm now I'm now I'm completely mind fucked. The whole last day I'm sitting there like, okay, I'm gonna fight this. Like, sad. Like, I gotta get myself noticed here. I gotta do something. Yeah. And Avery before the game too is like arguing me like, don't fight him. I got him. I got him. And I was like, okay, he nah. fight Car. Would he? I was like, like, would he fight yeah. Carbo? So so that I'm sitting there in warm up and I could see them jawing a little bit and I'm I'm like telling him like, hey, like give me a chance. He's like, nah, 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 nah. And I think it was like three. Might have been three or four one late in the game. And I kind of gave him no choice. Like I beelined across the ice. I can't remember who it was. Maybe like Daryl Powell, a little smaller guy. And uh, I beelined for him and I like almost went over the bench. And then he had no choice at that point and came and fought me. So that was that was probably the most memorable thing. I know I had the disallowed goal and stuff, but that was uh yeah, that was pretty awesome. My boys were pretty excited back home and everything. Oh, Don man. Cherry gave me, Don Cherry gave me a shout out that night. So I was like, Oh, that's awesome. Mission, man. mission accomplished. Yeah, I got sent to Torts. Did uh, you really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Torts. Uh, I think it was it was right before Christmas, so I don't know if they 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 might have had one more game or I was going down on my American League Christmas break or something. But he was he was he loved it. Oh, uh, that have you had that happen before or any time after where when you have like a a guy in mind, like you're mentally preparing to to engage, and then you have a coach tell you not to engage with that guy because I've had that happen with you before. Not that I was any bit of a, you know, close to a player as you but like you know you just leave that guy on the ice you're like well fuck i mentally prepared for this for like 24 48 hours <laughs> did you tell me not to fight now? i like, haven't slept for 48 <laughs> yeah, hours man. Like, come on, dude. Like, throw a ball in here. yeah but, maybe yeah. um like maybe my first year in vancouver i don't know if 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 they would have i like and i was nowhere near as tough as you so it was almost the opposite end of the spectrum the coach is like yeah go fight whoever you want like it don't matter <laughs> and and vancouver i don't remember vino ever telling me i just know a couple times like I had uh, Max Lapierre and Manny Maholcher were, were my line mates for a majority of that year, and they both spoke French. So, like, they would be like translating whatever Vino was saying behind me because times he would be like chirping me, and Lapierre would <laughs> lean over and be like, Yeah, he says you're fucking terrible. And I was like, <laughs> Come on. And I, was, I didn't know if he because Lapierre liked to joke around quite a bit, but it was yeah. like a couple of times I was like, I knew he was serious because he's pissed. He's yeah. like whispering in my ear. And then a couple of times it's like, You know, he's like, Yeah, he's, you should probably go fight somebody. And I was like, Oh my god, does I speak English? Like and yeah, I loved right. him too. And I loved him. He did some weird things like that though. But I can't remember any time. Maybe in, in Montreal, actually, maybe a couple times, but it was like and I know when we got into it with Boston and the Lucic and the Sean Thornton thing. Like I didn't right. really want to fight Sean Thornton. So I was I was happy to to not engage with him. So I just <laughs> I was happy to get him wound up and 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 get yeah. him off the same with Lucic. So we went uh it worked pretty good on that front. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, um, you in t- 2011 in camp, you, you end up, you, you got waived, but you got picked up by Van. Now, Vino was a coach in Van at that point, right? Yeah. So, when, was he, who was coach? I thought, was Torch not coaching? He came when, in. He, yeah. When you so guys Vino, had that legendary brawl? Yeah. So, that was, that was my third year in Van. Vino coached the first yeah. year. We won the President's Trophy and then lost to LA in the first round. Uh, what was it? Five games. And That's a second- curse. That president's trophy, man. I'm telling you. I think so. I think so. And then the second year, uh, while well, lockout season there, uh, 2013, I think we might have been second in the league. I know we won our division, and we got swept by San Jose in the first round. So Vino got fired, and then they brought in Torts the next year. Hmm. So were you, were you happy to see Torts, or was he better with you this time? Um, well, I kind of put my foot in my mouth. Like a couple weeks before he got hired, um, I'd, I'd like some media guys call me and it was like oh you know can we do something i was like yeah sure you know i'm a young kid and i answered some questions on torts if i thought he was a good fit for vancouver and i said absolutely not um oh, i said we got an old we got an older team we got some really good leaders and we had like you know sedines uh Bieksa, kessler burrows uh dan ham hughes manny maholcher like we had some really good veteran leaders really like, good players you just like, where oh I, and just the way they let her and luongo too as a goalie like yeah Vino wouldn't even need to say anything. Like the players ran the room the first two years. So I just right. thought it was a weird fit. You know, I, I, I saw towards a little bit in New York. I didn't get the full ex- experience, but um, yeah, I said, uh, 
that I didn't think he was a good fit. And he ended up getting the job three days later. So, uh, <laughs> oh, and I don't know if he read that or if he heard that, but like he came in the dressing room and he like dabbed me up when he saw me, he was excited. So it was, it, we had a good run from the start. Like I had, we had no, no, you know, there was no ill, ill effect from, from New York, which. Oh, that's couple, good. That's good. We had a couple of fuck you battles there. So he loved yeah. it. Yeah, he usually does. He seems yeah, to enjoy. It pretty I think standard. You, I think he wants to know that you care enough, yep. you know, as a player. I, I really believe that. I mean, it's, from yep. everyone yeah. we've talked to, the Tatums, like, like Vinny LeCavi, I know we've talked about this before on the show, but he, he told me and uh, when he came to Philly, he was like, we basically the last two years had a fuck you contest every day at the rink. And he goes, now this is the guy I'm calling to, like, keep me calm and help me through this mess. He, you know, Vinny had a tough, you know, tough run here. Um, he yeah. wasn't that happy, but, yeah. uh, you know, he said he's one of my best friends and I know personally torts treated me like gold. I worked with him a lot with team USA. Um, yeah, I've always been a, and you know, just been a super nice guy. So it's, it's good that I, I especially after that interview, man, I would be like, Oh, yeah. shit. Well, I, I thought he was going to come in and just rip you up or something. <laughs> yeah. I, thought I, I was like, man, I finally got established now. And now I put my foot in my mouth. I, in my mind, I literally thought there's no possible way this guy's getting the job. I was like, there's no way he fits on our team. Right. And then, you know, it, it is what it is. It didn't work anyway. So I was right. But um, <laughs> it, I, I put my foot in my mouth and it was, but it was, he was good. Like I can honestly say if I seen torts today, like, we could have so many laughs together. I respect the shit out of the guy. Yeah. I think he's an excellent motivator. It is what it is. It's it's like white and black with him. Like, and I love that about him. I have so much respect for him. And and outside of the the fuck you battles that we had together, like I I respect the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah lot, that's what we hear it's what time. most. Yeah, it's what we we hear most of the time. The majority of the time, you may you uh, <clears throat> you pique my interest a little bit. Kevin Biaxa. Is he a beauty or what? Like, how, how was it playing with him? Like, that guy, amazing. he's, first of all, he's amazing. tough as shit. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, and he's not an op overly big guy either, no. right? But he's not afraid of anyone, I don't think. Or no. he wasn't when he played. Yeah, no, he's not. He's not. He was an, an, an unreal teammate. Like, I think I was really spoiled early with the guys that I had on Vancouver. Um, Just for examples of, you know, like, fucking people use the term all the time, how to be pros. Like there, there was just so many good guys there that did had a ton of fun and we had a great team. We'd have fun as a team off yeah. ice. We'd do a ton of stuff like, man, I can count on, on one hand, the team parties I had with other teams and in Vancouver, yeah. we, we were the best team in the league the first two years there. And I could count on one, like in one month, how many team events we'd have together. It would yeah. be like on, on the road. Kevin BX would be one of the leaders where it's like yeah. old school, get to the hotel, put your bags down. They everyone tips the bus driver, be on the bus in 20 minutes. Bag so chuck. I, is that what yeah. skills he does? <laughs> yeah. the old, the old just un, it, was, it was just unreal. Bexa was was one of the big leaders there. I remember one time, um, I got a puck in the face right between my eyes here, and we were playing Calgary. We got we got into Calgary the other day, and my parents were in town, and Kevin met my parents in the in the morning and stuff. They came to watch morning skate. And you know, I get thrown out in opening lineup, and I'm like, okay, I gotta fight this guy in the lineup. And I, you know, I, I never talked to Kevin about any of this. And I remember he comes up to me in the dressing room before and he's like, don't fight anyone. He's like, I'm, I'm going to take him off the start. And I was like, this is one of our best defensemen. Like he has no business. He didn't have to fight anybody. Like that's, that was my job there. Like I, I should yeah. be fighting that guy. <laughs> and I just thought it was like, and you see when we had the brawl with torts, like yeah, uh, Kellen Lane, it's his first game. He was in the dressing room telling him like, don't fight. Like, don't fight. Like I'll come, and you can see he comes and takes a draw. He like, takes a draw. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. Just, an, just an incredible guy. Like it, the best teammate you could ask for. That's yeah. Awesome. It seems like he's pretty witty too. He's got some good one. Yeah. Did you see? Did, Weezy, did you did you see the year he uh, he dressed up like a security guard? He put the beard on. You got to check it out. It's on YouTube somewhere. He's I like all the boys he's are coming in, but he's got a really good uh, disguise on, and he's like a a worker, and he's like. You know how you go down to Anaheim, you got to go down that tunnel to walk yep. in. Well, they got the the things you walk through, the metal detectors, and Come he's on. just being ridiculous. Oh. And he's like hitting the boys. <laughs> he's like hitting the boys in the nuts with the thing, and he's just being <laughs> just. And they don't know it's him. And I think someone finally is like, kind of figures it out, but he he throws them for a loop. It's it's one of the oh, funnier I things I've ever. I gotta seen. watch it. Yeah, he he yeah, was pretty good he, man. He was he was always joking and laughing. He, he's yeah. an awesome guy.
the old Superman punch, man. Oh yeah, he did that. A few He's times. landed that a few times. Yeah, man. he did. Yeah, he mastered that. It's pretty, pretty crazy. crazy. What a move! Um, yeah, I know, right? right? <laughs> to think to do that, even in a hockey fight. That. <laughs> if I thought to do that or something, I would end up getting a kick right in the chin as I'm like leaning in or something. You'd, just, you'd be oh five, oh five and one now. Oh five and one instead of oh four and one. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. Um, speaking of the Sedins, real quick, we'll, we'll we'll get going here. But uh, were they? Would you say they were the two best players you ever played with, or what? Either one of them, best player? Because uh, you played with a lot of you played with a lot of good players. I, I man, I had some good tandems like the Sedins, Taves and Kane, G and Jake. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, I forgot about Tate. Yeah, I forgot about I was, that. I played with some some really really good tandems. Kaner, but, uh, Kaner's mitts aren't that soft though. Eh? Uh, <laughs> him and well, him and Panarin. Sorry, I should say when I was oh, there. Oh, you played with Panarin. That's right. Yeah, like the two of them, it was just stupid in practice. But um, yeah, I, I think the Sedins are right there with the, like I, I would almost put them above. Just when I was there in twenty, you know, the year after they went to the Stanley Cup, twenty twelve, like those next two, three years, they were still, still really, really elite. And, um, you know, for me, like as good of players, they were, they would always like chirp each other, how they weren't good about stuff. And it was like, <laughs> kind of, kind of mind blowing to me how you like, ah, <laughs> and he can't pass and Hank hey, can't score. He got a terrible shot. And it's like, they That's would always great. chirp each other. And it was so awesome. It was like, here's yeah. the two best players in the world talking like they're not that good. As if, like, it's a couple of beer league guys going at it. Yeah, like, <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And I, it's, it was so fun to play when, when I would get to see them play. Dude, those guys could play with their eyes closed together. Oh, my God. Insane, I mean, the passes they made, I mean, I don't know. It was just, it just blew my mind away. Every single time I saw them play, I yeah. was just like, this is awesome. Like, I oh, felt I lucky I'm on the bench. I know. I felt I lucky felt every day of my life. Say, yeah. But it I was felt the awesome. same way. I felt this like just to watch him in practice every day. I just, oh man, it was, it was, it was a treat. Like to, I was the guy volunteering, like, okay, power play needs some dummies to go stand there and let us pass. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll go out there. Like, yeah. and it's, it's incredible how good they were and no disrespect to them. Like they were not great skaters, both of them. Like, right. Right. Yeah. Right. Not great That's skaters true. at all. And they just were so smart. The way they could play was just, it was so entertaining and, I'd never seen anybody still to this day take a beating the way they did and just get abused by everyone about how soft they were. Like these guys could not get a call ever, no matter what the score, like they could not get a call. Like they would be three guys on them, slashing them. And it's like, they had this reputation. And even with the refs, I would assume that they're like, wow, they're, they're soft. They're, they're like, soft. Yeah. Right. They, they were, they, they were, were Berkey. Berkey lost it the one time, you know, so- uh, in the playoffs, I think, or I, I forget what year it was, but Berkey was like, good God, man, they're just getting abused out there, not getting true. any calls. True. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we, well, we do need to, <laughs> when you played in the Netherlands, you got a pretty cool nickname. <laughs> Dutch Gretzky. You know what? Like, it's so funny, and I've told the story before that, um, I mean, I, I like, I went to Vancouver I didn't pay any attention. It was my first year in the NHL. I didn't pay any attention to the uh, NHLPA stuff or the lockout. I was like, oh, there's not going to be a lockout. I didn't pay any attention. And I went to Vancouver three weeks before training camp. I'm in great shape. I was like, man, I just played my first year in the league. Here we go. And it was like four guys in Vancouver like two days before training camp. You know, most guys are at least a week before you got almost the whole team. Nobody's there. And I was like, wow, this is probably pretty serious here. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, lock, um, <laughs> might be. <laughs> I, went, I went home and I was like, I, I just actually my lake house now. I just bought my lake. I was enjoying it all summer. I come back in September. I say, like, well, it's still nice though. This is kind of cool. And a month goes by, or like middle of October, and like doesn't look like we're playing anytime soon. And I call my agent. I was like, yeah, I I got to go play somewhere. Like this is kind of ridiculous because I, I the way the ruling was, I couldn't go play in the American League because I I think I, right. I don't know if I three games or whatever it was. And I told him, I said, uh, I think it was like Wednesday. I was like, find me a team. I don't care where it is. I want to be on a plane by Friday. It's like, I, I just want to go play. I don't care where it is. I don't care what I'm getting paid. I just, just want to go play. He called me back like three hours later. He's like, I actually have a team that's uh, right beside Amsterdam. Oh. And, and I was like, uh, well, that might work. Uh, but let me let me see. Let me see what else you got. Should have called, called Riley. Me. He would have been there yeah, exactly. he, he, was, he was like, uh, well, I, I don't know. They had another another guy was supposed to go when he bailed and he's like maybe the, the gm will call you so the gm calls me and um 
kind of like twisted my arm a little bit. Like he was just it sounded like a super nice guy. And again, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be that long. So I was like, yeah, I'll come. I went, I showed up there. They had like a press conference. Like I was Henrik Sedin coming there. Like come on. It, was, <laughs> it was ridiculous, but oh man, I had so much fun there. And Lauren came with me too. So like we, we were kind of just started dating well, maybe a couple months. And I was like, ah, oh, come, come to Amsterdam for a, a week or two. I literally didn't think I was going to be there that long. I ended up staying three and a half months and I had, I had the time of my life, like amazing oh, people awesome. got treated so well. Uh, awesome. and Netherlands is just a awesome better, better than Sweden. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm biased. I had a much better time in, in, yeah, in the yeah. and, uh, lit it up too. So that's probably yeah, helpful. Was, you know, like the richest guy in the country, like owned the team. So like, oh, okay, perfect, right. like people chirp the, 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 you know, the Netherlands league, but I'm telling you, I had way more resources in the Netherlands league than I did in Sweden. Wow, that's interesting. You don't hear about the yeah the Netherlands league at all, eh? You, you don't, don't hear you don't, you don't hear anything. They don't have the the one team is the only team that pretty much pays players, and uh, the the company's the Destel that that the guy owns, and uh, well, it's one of his companies, and like you know they work at they work at the factory, and then they come to practice, and then they're like the only guys that are getting paid. Um, but it was <laughs> it was it was fun. I had such a good time there. That's awesome. I bet. Yeah, that's great. It's pretty pretty cool nickname too. Yeah, I know. Anybody still <laughs> call you that? that? Yeah, so well, like, I, I get it sometimes, but it was like Vancouver was like chirping me about it. So when I came back, that's like the media, Vancouver media started it. Yeah. Uh, they were like, they're like, oh, you scored four goals the year before. Like, my, then I, I, I didn't care. Like, whatever, you chirp me all you want. But I was yeah. more upset that they were like kind of making a mockery of, of, of the league in the Netherlands. Like, the people were so good to me. And like, you know, they probably didn't, well, they might have followed Danny Chell, but now they're like following me and they're reading this and people are making fun of their league. And, and I, yeah, that was probably yeah. the most. That's a shame. Yeah, that's brutal. That's brutal. Um, real quick, uh, I just wanted to touch on that that brawl. How did how did all that start? Did it just start because they put he he they turn in the sheet to you guys and you see he's got all the the cement starting? Is that what yeah. happened? Yeah, it was weird. Like we didn't play them or wasn't like, and nothing was going on. I, I guess, you know, they were having a hard time in Calgary. Well, we're, Hartley's we're, just a fucking idiot. I mean, yeah, sorry, he, but he, he, he is. <laughs> Excuse me. So Torch just came in and was like, um, they're starting uh West Garth, McGratton, uh whoever else they had out there. Yeah. And he goes, uh, we're starting uh Weiser, uh Tommy Sestito, uh Callan Lane, gotta throw you out there. Uh Bjaxa and uh I think it was Garrison or something, but we kind of and he didn't even say anything. He's like, I gotta start oh, you. Oh, okay. Like, so he didn't gotta, say anything. Okay. No, he's like, I gotta start you guys. I gotta put you know, gotta start you. And it's like I, I thought it was funny. It was like, it was, it, it was excellent. Like, yeah. And and the, the funny part about it was ports never like, never would have, would have like been on the bench and being like, yeah, go fight that guy now. But he would be like, you know, he's, he's not stopping anybody. Right. And then he came in after and he's like apologizing to us. He's like, sorry, we, sir, I shouldn't have done that to you guys. I shouldn't have done it. It was like, it, it, it was, it, that was the first time I think I've ever seen a coach be born vulnerable, sorry, and actually be real, which I loved. I respected the shit out of it. Like I said, because you know, everybody yeah. understood what their job was. The building went crazy. Like, oh yeah, oh man, uh, dude. You're, that, you're, I mean, you still that that pops up on my feed, and I watch it. Like, I mean, it's it's no one's turning just, their head to that, which the league no, needs yeah. to realize. But I agree. Um, I like we could use a little more of that, to be honest. Yeah, with you. no kidding. It was crazy, and then I mean, then the whole thing in the hallway where you know, like, it's oh, cool yeah, because, right? like yeah. I've been there so many times, and I'm like, oh my god, I like, thought Grant was gonna rip towards his head off. Her. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I big think, Earns like, yeah, trying right? to get a hold of towards. <laughs> yeah, holy oh, shit! Exactly. And that Hartley's just in the back. Like oh, you just terrible. almost wish the seas would have parted. And, yeah. and see what I, happened but uh yeah. I, I bob hartley uh never did anything to me i don't i don't know the man but uh i just remember when he coached in uh hershey he he just did shit and i i can't believe i guess he he scared his players enough to where if you didn't do what he said you, you were gone i mean he would yeah. bring guys up from the coast to try to fight frank the animal by lois and he would just get their heads ripped off. i mean it, he almost felt bad for the guys you know but they knew yeah. they had to do it but i remember one night they had beaten us. It was the year two of the of the Phantoms. The year before, the, give them credit. They won the Calder Cup in the American League. And every time we played Hershey, it was sold out. Seven, 17,380 in the Spectrum, that greatest building. I used to love that building. Um, and it was always sold out. And we were pounding. We were pounding Hershey. And he stood up in the third period 
and was doing like this with his ring from the year before. Oh, and I thought hey, this was the greatest thing I ever saw Billy do. Billy, ah. Billy looked at him and was like, fucking really? And he stood up and he pointed up to the, his jersey hanging uh, in the hanging, fucking yeah, right. in the in the fucking you know the banner hanging up in the rafters yep. and the Stanley Cup rings yeah. and that place that I swear to God the fuck thought the roof was coming off but anyway <laughs> whatever Hartley but uh, yeah he kind of <laughs> started that shit but it it was fun it. to watch it was fun to watch man yeah I mean well it was Torts and and Hartley I I don't know if it was before well it must have been before because Torts was still with the Rangers like you remember the Jersey Ranger one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's so right. I'm, I'm, a, I, I don't know if it, if it stemmed from that. Like, I think it was uh, oh. Trust and Bickle and. Um, oh yeah, I remember that one. You remember that one? Yeah, yeah, so that yeah, was, yeah. That oh, was a yeah, good right, one too, man. That was a really yeah. good one. A year before ours, maybe two years before. So yeah, I mean they had a history. That's of true. It, so. Yeah, yeah, it could have been. Yeah. Um. So uh, anyway, you you get you end up in Montreal. You traded Montreal. How was that experience? Uh, I, that was, that was like a turning point of my career. Um, I think right before I got traded, I had one of those, you know, maybe a couple of weeks before, like, again, I was sitting there with Lauren and, and we had Hunter Hunter was only a couple months old. And I'm like, I like, guess might be it. Like I might be done in the league. Like, you know, we start talking, maybe, maybe we go to Russia next year. Maybe we go to Switzerland. Like this might be it. Um, just the way things were going in Vancouver. And then I get traded to Montreal, Michelle Terry and smoke in his mouth oh brings, me in the, brings me in the first day. And he's like, I don't know a lot about you. And I was like, Oh, great. And, uh, he's like, <laughs> that's, he's like, that's good for you. I'm, uh, I'm going to give you a chance. So fresh start, show me what you can do. And it was, it was awesome. Like, yeah. Gave me a chance to play. We never talked about fighting. Like I played with some good players. If I was having a good game, he'd move me up the lineup. Um, and his whole time there, he did that. So, he really, really, uh, yeah. him and, and, and Mark Bergerman, I, I owe a ton to them. Oh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome, man, because they, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> you hear a lot about uh, French Mike, as we call him. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, when he came to the Flyers, I was still with the team, and I didn't know what to expect because I've heard what you just said. I've heard worse things, you yeah. know, like a lot of oh, bads, yeah. more bad than good, let's be honest. For sure. But that yeah. guy treated me great. I will say I believe he it. was yeah. every day walked in, said, good morning, nasty. And his French accent. I don't want to try to do it. Cause I don't know how to <laughs> try it. It's it's no. it's well, strong. I can tell you what he'd say. He'd say, uh, he'd say, uh, not, let's see that. Let's see that phone. What you got? Yeah. And if yeah. I'd, yeah. Find, I'd find somebody go tap or neck and nasty. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he loved, he loved to see something. If something was on there. Uh, yeah, he, he he, like I said, man, he, he treated me awesome. He really did. Every day when he left, he'd come by. He didn't have, you know, co you didn't, they don't have time yep. to do that all the time, but I, he, he really treated me well, man. Always did. I, so. and, and I like what I liked about him uh, just from a player's perspective is like, you know, you had the like Vino who didn't say anything to me. And then we had Torts who was just telling you to fuck off. And then Michelle would <laughs> actually, you know, you, you start to slide for two games you're not playing well. He calls you into the office. I don't think you're playing well. Like, you got to get going or I'm going to take you out of the lineup. Like there was right. no like, why well, don't talk to you for a month and then you're out of the lineup and then good luck getting an answer from there. Like, you know, like he yeah. was just, this is what I need for him. I need you to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to play. But it was like yeah. he kept in contact with the players and kind of, I mean, you're having a bad week. Like, come on, you got to get going. Like it was, it was to me, I, he was the, the best coach. I had the most success there. And I, I again, yeah, I owe a ton to him. Yeah. yeah boy, you had a over. really hot start. Uh, the one year, um, there with him yeah i was i was playing a ton i think i had uh i might have had nine goals in the first eight games yeah it was uh, crazy like i was like man but that's awesome I, yeah it was it was it was like i had a good year the year before i kind of i i got off to a good start i got a little cold by the end of the year had a good playoffs and then there it was like i don't know i just felt like i i i, I was ready to take my game to the next level i was playing with some good players i played with uh david darnay and thomas fleischman fleischman came in on a pto and our line was lights out in exhibition and we started the season just like that and took off. And it was, it was just kind of like, and I was playing in a third line role, second line. I got on the power play, scored a couple of yeah. power play goals. Where it was kind of like, man, I'm finally in a good position. I'm finally getting a chance to play. And um, obviously having a coach that believed in you still. So he was, he that was happens. trying to get the opportunities. So it was, it was awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. You, you, when you talk about uh, the communication with uh, Terry and like you see, 
it seems so simple, right? Like all a player wants is to know where he stands. Like how hard is that to just communicate? Even if it's hard for you to say, you know, not playing well, like just let the guy know. Like, yeah. It's Cause it's helpful for the whole team. I mean, yeah. You know, sometimes we're like, you think you're playing okay, but realistically, if the guy comes in and tells you like, fuck, I need you to like be a little more physical. Like I need you to do this. Like, then you're like, okay, maybe I wasn't playing as well. Cause you can kind of, it's 82 games. Nobody expects you to be on fire every night or doing, you know, exactly what you need every night, but it's, it's nice to just know some certainty of like, need this, need this, need this. Like I went three and a half years with Dave Haxtall and I like, I couldn't tell you what this guy wanted, what he needed, what like nothing. So it was, it was, there's, there's two extremes of those two guys. Yeah. That's just challenging yeah. when you don't know. Like you said, like you think you're playing okay yeah. until you're not and they're not playing and then they pull you out of the lineup and be like, what the hell? A, a little pep talk could help me out a little bit. You know, any isn't, kind that, of isn't, any that, talk, isn't, any isn't that your job as a coach is to kind of get you engaged? I don't know. Like, yeah. And, and everybody's different, right? Like, I think that's the, you see the best coaches. Like I, I love watching John Cooper is like, right. I all the time. Like, this guy's different from this guy and I need to handle this guy different. Like some coaches are like, I'm going to coach all 23 players the exact same way. And it's just not going to work for you. It's not going to work. That's, that's for right. sure. Um, quickly, uh, <clears throat> you and Luch, big Luch, the big rivalry you were talking about earlier. You uh, were able to get under the skin and him and Thority cakes, uh, our buddy Thority. Yeah. Um, but uh, man, that you did your job. I mean, you were doing what you were supposed to be. I mean, that's the idea. Like he, not only was he a big tough guy, but he was a he, guy scored goals and he was yeah, a big part of their team and you guys yeah. beat him. Huge. And and I think it's, it kind of stems back from when I was with Vancouver the year before, like we had another brawl with Van, Vancouver Boston. I was in on that one where, um, uh, what was it? I think it was Burrow stick somebody on the way to the bench. It was the first time after. No the, way. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shocker. <laughs> shocker. It was the first game uh, Vancouver played Boston after the Stanley Cup. So 2012. And I remember that one too. And, um, you know, we had, we had an all American line that was on fire uh, Kessler, Booth, and uh, Higgins. And Vino comes in, goes, uh, Kessler, uh, Higgy, you're on the left. Weiser, you're starting on the right. And I'm like, ah, oh, geez. It's like, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> kind of like, they like you know they got beat up the year before in the finals boston absolutely dominated them we like i'm the only thing remotely close to like not an enforcer by any means but anybody like a willing combatant and we have nobody else so i'm like okay who's who's on the other side here like i know thornton i know uh mcquade um you know they had three or four pr yeah. pretty, pretty legit guys yeah and i go up to marshawn and i'm like okay like this how's this gonna go and like doesn't say a word i'm like looking around it's, mcquade wasn't on d it's like okay so the first shift nothing happens then i think it was the second shift burrow sticks him on the bench uh chara horton uh lucic thornton uh their lineup was ridiculous and we had like you know we had nobody and you could i mean people again can go watch that one that one was good like one guy on top from vancouver and then three four five everybody <laughs> came up from the dog pile I ended up fighting uh Nathan Horton and then I when I came out of the box Horton standing beside me I don't know still to this day he probably thinks I fake glove dropped him but I was gonna fight McQuaid McQuaid's like we're going I was like okay I was like I'm gonna pick the the, the least of the two evils here that I think <laughs> yeah right so I was like yeah okay I'll, I'll fight you and then all of a sudden Thornton drops his gloves and I'm like what is going on here I didn't, I didn't agree to this so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I did not. so I had I a, didn't I had sign a, up for this one boys yeah and it wasn't like and even Marshawn after the game was like yeah I think authority kind of goaded him in there because you know he was agreeing to fight McQuaid. It was like at least you know he kind of stood up for me it didn't make me look like right. too big of a so <laughs> like, not a not a, not a lightweight either but um no, that's yeah so i had him wound up from that day on then when i went to montreal i mean it, thornton like that line of uh, uh who was a dan pie uh campbell and thornton like yeah, uh, yeah. What they call them? our low line like they were unreal yeah. when they yeah, won the Stanley cup they were playing 13 14 minutes a night yep. so I, I had to get that line off their game a little bit and then lucic thing kind of just kind of came about in the playoffs there but it was man i had like thornton was scree every warm-up of that series he was screaming at me in warm-up like oh i'm sure he was, he's falling oh, at the most he was, oh he was so wound up and i think because i wouldn't fight him that was like he yeah. just couldn't he couldn't get over it so it was it, it was that was a great series that was probably the most fun i've had playing hockey yeah uh, that, that, that was a good series i remember i remember <clears throat> watching that one um so you ended up well. You, you talked about getting traded. You playing with Chicago with Kaner and Taves and, and uh, Panarin and those guys, but uh, you, your decision to come to Philly. Um, what did that? How did that work out? Like what? What? What was the whole uh, game plan there? 
Yeah. So um, when I went to free agency, I probably had about 10 teams uh, that were at three years at about the same number. Um, and I'm looking at rosters. I'm looking where, okay, where, like, again, I took a step back in Chicago. I got traded there, barely played again. I was like, yeah, I got to make sure I find a good fit here. Cause yeah, I don't want to, well, you got traded the- from Montreal there the year you were hot. Yeah, yeah, man. I had, you, uh, yeah. I had four, fourteen goals in the forty-five games. Like I was, yeah. I was going to score twenty goals that year. Like, yeah, I was, I was pissed. I got traded. I never wanted to leave, but they never made me an offer. They made a great. I mean, it worked out for them. They had a great deal, but yeah. and then I went to Chicago, barely played. So when I'm looking at teams, I'm looking at the roster. I'm like, hey, I got to find a way. I'm, and I'm not saying I'm going to play on the second, first line. Like I just, I just want to find a good fit on the third line. Maybe I get on the second power play, kill some penalties. That's all I'm looking for. And right. uh, Hexy calls me. He was the first GM that I talked to. And kind of, um, man, he he sold me right away. Like after I talked to Hexy, I always obviously wanted to play in Philly. Being a role player, like looks like a great hockey city. I love the team. I think it's a good roster. I think I can fit. So, and after I talked to Hexy, it was kind of a wash from there. I was like, told my agent, I said, okay, let's push some other teams and 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 see if we can get to four years. Uh, I think we had four or five come back at four years, but I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go with Philly because I just to me Hexy sold it. I I liked it and. Um, and I was pumped, man. I was excited. Yeah, I remember. <clears throat> I remember you came there. Obviously, you and I hit it off uh, right away. Um, you're always great to great to the staff, great to me. Um, and you were well liked in the room as well. Um, it was a tough time here then because it, it was just it was we were supposed to be rebuilding. I remember the first year. I think uh, Hexy was here. Chief had taken over. Um, you missed Chief, correct? Yeah. You missed chief. Yeah. Cause you were, you were a mantra. Uh, but uh, we made the playoffs that year. The next year we didn't, didn't have the greatest lineup, but you know, we didn't make the playoffs. So chief, you know, he kind of got the bad end of that whole thing. I, I didn't really like that. I don't think a lot of guys did, but it, you know, it's the business, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, he kind of, he was kind of saying to me, if we don't make playoffs. He's, he's going to fire me. I can tell you right now. I'm like, no way, man. Look, like, like not nothing against any of the guys. We just didn't have that lineup. Yeah, that you didn't have enough. You know, yeah, uh, we didn't have enough. And um, great, great core, but not you know just not enough. I don't think. But uh, anyway, um, Hack comes in, you sign, and we just we did make the playoffs. I think a couple times while Hack was here in the four years, four and a half years he was here, but uh, was it the best of times in Philly? You know, like as you were kind of alluding to earlier. Yeah, it was it was weird, and and I think maybe I could feel it right away when I came in there because I came from Chicago, where I mean, you look at the nucleus that they had, like that was yeah. that was awesome. like as soon as you walk in that room, spend twenty minutes, or you see why they won. Like that is a team, and mm. I walked into Philly, and it was just kind of a weird. I had a weird vibe on the team. I don't know what it was. I even I, I wish I could like quoted this. I could just, like I'm predicting the future, but I was like I was talking to my dad. He's like, oh, how's things going? I was like, man, so we got a weird vibe on this team. I don't know what it is. And I still don't have the answer of what it was, but we, we had some good teams um, when I was there and we just never lived up to it. And right. if I had to point to one thing that I thought was the issue, um, I, I think it's accountability and, and hack didn't hold enough guys accountable. And aside from my bias and, and me and him didn't have a real great working relationship. I just, there wasn't enough accountability on, on the guys that were carrying the team to me. And that's where it's got to start. If, if, when I was in Chicago a couple months earlier, you know, we're in the playoffs, Quenville comes in, he's calling out Kane and Taves. Hmm. You're going to get a response. And in Philly, it was like, we're rotating the bottom guys on the lineup and we're blaming those guys. Yeah. You know, I know. Right? On the game at four minutes, you know, you can take one out and, you know, there's a change thing. anything. At the yeah, end of the day. Where like, you know, and, and uh, I was sitting in a stance for like a month and a half. They brought up like, Tyrell Goldborn at one point from the American League, like good, good on him. Like, but it was so weird. You're paying a guy two and a half million dollars to sit in the stands. You're bringing up a guy in the minors that probably isn't a, a, a full time NHLer. Like, it was just so many weird things went on there. And um, actually, had some interesting ways of running a team. So they were, yeah. we keep hearing never, more and more. <laughs> I never saw anything like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, like <clears throat> I will say this and I've said it before. Cause, cause people ask me, I, from my side of things, he was my boss. Well, he was everyone's boss. Yeah. So some things I thought I knew him since I was a kid. So yeah. I got a little different side of Hexy when it was him and I, 
Like we had yeah. a great relationship. I actually really had a good relationship with Hexia and I still do. Um, sure. He, he liked to be hands-on. Yeah. Uh, sometimes he would say stuff to me and, and then I would never do it in front of anyone else, but him and I, like I would joke with him about it, you know, and he would laugh. I'm like, yeah. he would always kid around about, Oh, Dino was crazy. He was so like on top. I'm like, Dino. I said, what about you? Oh, fuck, fuck that, Deke. That's not me. You know, like we would kid yeah. around about that stuff. But for me, I always tell people like he was my boss. He had rules. I didn't, I thought some of them were a little odd, but yeah. he was my, he was my boss. So yeah. I just did what he said and yeah, I got along course. fine with him. But I know what you mean from the player side. I know it was, I mean, players have said it before when we've, when we've had them on, you know, it was just uh, some things they thought were, were odd. And yeah, it was, different, it was different. different. It was different. Yeah, I, I got yeah. you know what I, I got I got no ill will towards Hexy too. Like I'm I'm not um I, I'm I'm not saying anything about him. I just thought it was we had some weird there was weird things that like you wouldn't see on any other team. I mean, you know, one time yeah. I think he got, he got mad at me one time. I th I thought you were there. Where like I gave a stick away to a kid at the practice ring. Oh, was like, yes. it was no, more than no, once. No, no, no. <laughs> it was more than once. <laughs> and it was like he was getting mad about it. And it was like, this is the NHL, man. Like we're we're trying to sell the game. Like we got a little kid there. Like, come on, man. Yeah. You got mad at me for it. I think me and you oh, talked about God. it. Yeah, I thought it was me and you, but yeah, no, no, it, it was. There was there was one time Weezy. Uh so I don't think he understood. So I don't think he understood. We had game sticks that stayed with the game equipment. Yeah. And then we had the practice sticks. Um, but he, I will say this about Hexy. He didn't, my budget, if he would say, do do we, will it make us better? Will it, do the guys really need it? I'd say, yeah, he goes, go ahead. He was great that way. That yeah. was things you guys didn't okay. see, but um, yeah. it was funny when it. he would get on me about the sticks because it happened a lot. <laughs> And one time he happened to be out on his perch and poor <laughs> yeah. TK is a rookie. Oh, and he's got, and he had, you know, what I would do is say, you played a game with a game stick. It stayed there, but I would leave like four on your rack. So the yeah. next game, when you cut a new stick, I'd take the last <coughs> one off, take it to the practice ring. So you yeah. had about 10 on your practice on your rack. Oh yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you guys were practicing with the same stick. So, you know, they would get beat up because practice, you're actually using them way more than you do in a game realistically. And, you know, you're taking yeah. extra shots, you're doing all this shit. Anyway, long story short, poor TK is 19 years old. He hands, he goes in, he takes his back sticks off and he gives one to one kid, one to another. Well, by the time he, ca he came around to my office to ask me a question and my phone's ringing. I said, Hey, don't, hang on, bud. It's X. And I put it on speaker. And he goes, Deke. Cause he called me Deke. He yeah. goes, you tell that TK. And I'm like, hitting, <laughs> sticking the speaker <laughs> off. Because <laughs> that's kids already. His eyes are like this. Right? No, he's, he's panicking. He's yeah, saying, he's saying he just gave two sticks away. We don't just, we can't be just giving. And I, I said, yep, I got you. I'll, I'll let him know. And TK, meanwhile, is standing right in front. He can still hear him. So yeah, oh, he, yeah. TK's looking at me. I said, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. And so I'm like, I told Hex later. I said, Hex, they, those sticks were broken, man. They were on the back of his rack. They're actually on the wall to go to my gray. Like yeah. he's like, wow, fuck Deke. These guys just throwing, you know, giving stuff. We, you know, we got charities. And I said, I, you're right. I understand. And yeah. then he was mad at me. And then later, I think it was a game day that night. He came in and he always came in at the same time. And we'd sit there and oh. shoot the shit for oh, about yeah. 10 minutes. I'd make fun of his suit. He had on cause he was bad yep. and he would laugh, you know? And, uh, he goes, Hey, I didn't mean to get on you today, but you know, your dad was tough on me. He, you know, I'd go to, I'd go back to Winnipeg and, and, uh, I would ask for a stick, you know, for my family. And he'd be like, well, all right, but you, you gotta be, you gotta be like your dad when it comes to these guys and those sticks. And, but so I know what you mean. It was kind of funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was different times, but, uh, it was. Yeah, I, we, I, I was happy to have you. And I, we had a pretty good group. I mean, for the main, most part, we had a good oh, group yeah. of guys. We, we had, had some fun. Time. Oh, yeah. we had a ton of fun. I had a ton of fun. I, 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 you know what? I probably think I was living in, uh, what was, I was living in Cherry Hill. It's probably yep. out of any of the places I lived. That's probably my favorite place I lived. I absolutely loved nice. living there. Like it was just the setup there is great. Like I had yeah. an outside of hockey. I had an unreal time there. Like I, yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. We, we did have some good time. I was thinking the other day, something popped up on my feed when, uh, you and myself and uh, we took Huggy and DZ 
the old the old high waters girl you got to put the high waters on dz thinks when he's in the when he's in the lineup he says that it's flooding it's flooding in there from all the women and uh we took mm-hmm. Huggy to an establishment owned by our buddy. There's one here in Philly, and got the cigars going. And Huggy's trying to puff on a cigar. He damn near <laughs> chokes oh, himself man. out. <laughs> I think he inhaled it. <laughs> oh hugged. man, yeah, I think that was uh, that was the outdoor game there, in Pittsburgh. I think is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. That That's that exactly that was what it was. That's right. Yeah, that was a good time. Uh, I like that. Time, man. I um, <laughs> I was I was thinking too about when you were here. We uh, we had a rookie party in band. Speaking of van, you spent a lot of time there. We had a, we had a good time. Uh, you know, we went to dinner. Did we end up at Roxy? Probably. I yeah, we, we might have. Yeah. No, I no, we went, uh, no, we we went to that. I don't even know. What's that guy's place. name? He has that. He Not took Peter's, us. 12 West. 12 West. Was, yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You, oh, God. What's that actor now? I'll never. Ah, it'd take me too long to remember that actor. And there's an actor sitting there with a young girl. Pick. McDovney, Kadovney, what's his name? He's a Canadian <laughs> guy. What's his name? I have no idea. Nas McLovin? <laughs> Not McLovin. <laughs> McCovney. I'm trying to think who, I'm trying to think who was. He was on X Files. That was the name of the show. Oh, was David Duchovny. David Duchovny. Sorry. Right, right, right. Nice. Good call. And he was I sitting there. That. He, that was good, Riggs. He was sitting <laughs> at the bar. We were all having drinks before we went back to have the dinner. That's what it was. And I. And I, I knew who he was from the X-Files, but then I ended up watching a show that I loved. He was in a little bit later. And I was like, man, if I would have known he was in that show, I would have probably tried to bother him just to say what's <laughs> up. Cause I, I loved him in the show. But anyway, uh, we had some good times, man. Uh, Michael raffle, like what a beauty oh, yeah. this guy was like, you got to play with the raft daddy. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the most unique guy. I think I ever played with by far. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was entertaining. Good word. He, he was entertaining. He, he, man. He, 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 he just you didn't have many bad days that guy he was you know no. even if was, if things weren't going well for him he uh he was just a guy who was so much fun to be around he was man i was gonna ask you we, we kind of had written down like who who was one of the funniest guys you played with in your uh, career? funniest guy i mean bxo early in my career was he's right up there um i mean pk suban was funny to me i thought he was oh hilarious. yeah you guys are boys yeah. i forgot yeah. about that yeah. yeah yeah he's he he i found i found his stuff hilarious like i never some guys didn't like him for a lot of stuff he did. I just found his stuff hilarious. Like this guy just, he loved playing. Yeah, hockey. Just, yeah. He loved his life. Like he just was happy every day. And I it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but I, I thought he was hilarious. Um, I mean, raffles pretty funny. Like G's got some good one-liners. G's G's he's funny. He's, he's got some one-liners. Yeah. I give it to him. Um, I'm trying to think who, who would be the funniest. I mean, DZ to me. I Yeah. Think. He is. Duh, he's so <laughs> lippy. Maybe you guys, so much I time loved, with them, like, yeah, I loved, I loved me. hanging, hanging with you guys when we get to go do stuff on the road because J- he's so goddamn lippy. Like the shit he would say. I remember, I remember us being in Calgary. I think I, t- I think I said this when he was on, uh, with us. But I'll never forget. I was going to meet you guys at the bar. You were saving me a spot. We had someone set it up, and we had a, we had a full day off. Yeah. And uh, I get there, and it's like DZ. Then there's a space. And then there's you and you saved me a spot. So I come in, it's happy hour. And I sit down and the young lady comes over, you know, good looking girl. And so DZ's obviously thinks he's in already. He hasn't even said a word. <laughs> <laughs> and he probably it's was. Automatic. It's automatic. And he, and he, yeah. and he probably was. <laughs> uh, but it was so funny because I don't think I laughed. So good. I don't think I laughed so hard at anything he ever said, but the girl comes over and of course he throws out a little line and she's like, Oh, he goes, well, why don't you just take off and, we'll pay you, we'll pay what you would make tonight and you can join us. And he says, sit right here with me. And, or I, he goes, have a seat. And she goes, Oh, you, you got space there. And he goes, Oh no, that's just for my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I oh. fucking lost uh, it. She goes, Oh, Oh my God. I he, had, oh, he, that's, had, that's... he had so many good wallet jokes. Like he yeah, had so he many did. jokes. They were just <laughs> so funny. And he got, were- ridiculous you couldn't take it serious oh awesome. i know i know he, he made me laugh. <laughs> he, he made me laugh a lot man but uh anyway man i know you gotta run you gotta you gotta get to practice and uh i miss you brother uh loved having you here uh really appreciate you joining us man and uh, taking the time 
yeah i appreciate it guys great being on here we uh we'll have to do this again to uh show yeah. up a couple more a couple more of the stories i got in the yeah, right. yeah <laughs> hell yeah man <laughs> yeah, yeah. No thanks kidding. guys i appreciate it great seeing you yeah you, too. you as well appreciate the it. hate of the family man everybody's hunts he got that belt so he still got oh, the got championship a, he's, got a, he's still got a couple he's got a all couple right belts. all oh, right yeah. he's still into is he still in the wwe uh he's uh, not so much i'm getting my little guy a little more into it but he's still watching oh, okay we okay. still keep an eye on it from time to time. If there's a show, we don't miss it if it comes through Winnipeg, though. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. You you do whatever you want. I, I probably like it more than them, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. Be good, man. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate thanks it. again. Thank a big thank you to our friend Dale Weese for hopping on. Weezy. Nice to see him again. Weezy. Yeah. Yeah. Miss that guy, man. He had a, you know, we didn't really, we didn't really get to talk about a whole lot of, uh, his time here, but, uh, he was, I think he's a better player than people gave him credit for. Um, I really enjoyed him. He was great in the room. Really good guy. Really treated me well. Um, but, uh, it was, uh, we really appreciate him taking the time and join us, man. I, I, he's a, he's a really funny guy too. Yeah, he is. Uh, obviously a lot of people don't know that about him, but he really is. He's a, he's a funny dude. Good dude too. Good family guy. Uh, great family. So Weezy appreciate you brother. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's always interesting when guys come to an organization later in their careers. You know, it's just like it's tough to keep up. You know that that prime time play, if you will, right? You come yeah. in a new organization, and you know whether the coach likes you or not. There's a lot of you know questionable variables there that you know can yeah h- help you or hurt you. And you know, it's uh, I think he was just you know t- kind of towards the end of his career and a challenging situation and unfortunate but he had a great career man you know he yeah. had some great years in, in montreal and vancouver and, he know. did um, he, he he uh i'll tell you man i think he was willing to do anything but i yeah. um like he said you know i don't know if the communication he felt like wasn't there so he was like w- w- you know which way am i going but uh um anyway i i enjoyed him i really yeah. did um i enjoyed his when he was here i had a really good time with the guy um so really appreciate him joining us man he's he's good good man good man yeah absolutely um riles i gotta remind you this saturday the philadelphia warriors are hosting their first ever military gala on the battleship new jersey Ooh, i'll yes. see you there right now why you gotta do that <laughs> yes i'm supposed to be there along with you but I have to go to Johnstown <laughs> with the Rebels, which I totally did not see on the schedule. And it's my fault. And I, I'm actually thinking about renting a car, following the bus, and then trying to get back for the gala if I can. I'm not sure it's going to work out that way. But uh, like I said, it's their first ever military gala. And if you want to pur- purchase tickets, uh, go to flyerswarrior.com or go to uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and click on the link that they have on there. It's a huge event. Um, it's, it's awesome. They're going to be dialed in with their, with their, I think a lot of them wear their military suits or, or, you know, it's a black, black tie. tie. And I actually bought a jacket. I think it came, I think it came here today. I haven't opened it yet, but I actually bought a special coat shiny black Ooh. oh yeah um i'll well, see you there i'll save you a spot now well i'll good. tell you you think i'm kidding like and i feel terrible because i i want to go and i honestly missed i don't know how i did it but uh i have to go with the rebels um to to johnstown for a road we play there friday saturday night and um i'm gonna see if i can make it work but uh Unfortunately, if I can't, I mean, I'm going to hate to miss it, especially it's their first one. And they're so pumped about it. And it's so cool. Those guys, we love them, man. You know, they're yeah. a big part of us and uh, try to do whatever we can for them. And they always do stuff for us. Um, love those guys, man. Yeah, Awesome, absolutely. awesome guys. And uh, it's going to be a blast. So please go again to uh, flyerswarriors.com or any of their uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Click on the link. And I uh, get your tickets. Uh, it's going to be a blast. They're going to have a fun. Those guys know how to have a good time. Too. Yes, they do. We, Hope we to see you guys that. there. Yeah. And, uh, also, we don't have everything in order yet, but we uh, we definitely know fans of Philly. We got some news coming with those guys. Joe DiMaggio, our boy. Um, yeah. The outdoor game versus the Devils, uh, MetLife Stadium. And uh, also, which is going to be great because it's 
on my birthday or right there day before say Patty's day. We're going to be in Boston. Um, uh, that mm-hmm. is just going to be amazing. Uh, can't wait for that. So, uh, just a little heads up on that. Our guys are fans of Philly Riles. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Yeah. Should be another good time. Yes. Sir. Always a blast. It it's is. that time. Nass. It's that time you've been holding off. You've is been- it time? It's that time. It's time for clear questions brought to you by clear rum, brother. Go oh, to clearrum.com yeah. and you know what you can get? What? Tell you me. You can get, you use code nasty2023 at clearrum.com slash shop and you get 35% off, brother. And I'm going to tell you what, it's the best drink going. And that is the truth. Oh, I know. Yeah, I can see you drinking them all and then you left. You can see what I'm drinking them. <laughs> I know you don't like to get into drinking, but that's fine. But I do. And it is delish. <laughs> I love it. Hydrate while you dehydrate. That's right, baby. That's Stay all you clear. can do is mix that water in. Mix the water that's in, boys. That's all you got to do. Well, clear clear water. on, baby. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, let's go. Clear questions. First one, Super Dino Mike on Twitter asks, how does a player like Brad Marchand go his entire career without somebody taking his head off? Mass. <sighs> you'd be all over his ass, wouldn't you? Yeah, right. Wow. I tell you what, man, that is a, that's a really good question because no one really ever has gotten a hold of him. And I had a chance of kind of getting to know him a little bit and believe it or not, people are like, Oh, they say this when I say it about Sid, because everyone in Philly hates Sidney Crosby, but Brad Marchand is an unbelievable guy. Like he really is. I know he's nuts on the ice and I know he's, you know, he's done some questionable things. I, I get it. He's a competitor doesn't make the other the other night that was i think he did it perp i don't i shouldn't say yeah it looked it looked bad it looked bad um but i don't know how he hasn't gotten killed you played against him how is he not i i I think about this all the time because it's always a new storyline with him involved and it's involving hurting somebody licking somebody or doing something outrageous (laughs) and it's just like to me, it was this is the exact reason that you have guys like Ryan Reeves still floating around. You know, this is it. Like you, but, you but, legitimately but, took out their one of their one of the better demon. I mean, well, like, you know, our boy, our boy uh, Rosie the other day, Jay Rose, Rose Hill. I I saw his little spiel on this, and he was right, man. Like there were other guys. Like you're in Reeves' spot. Like, are you gonna grab Marshawn? No, like when you were playing, you're a heavy. I mean, you're a heavyweight. It's tough for you to grab Marsh up. I will say this: Chief used to tell guys, "If you want to fuck around, I'm grabbing your best player, and I'm going to beat." Oh you. yeah, hundred percent. So at, at least that you'd have to like at least pretend to attempt to. Right, and there's and, several other guys that could. I mean, it's Brad Marchand. It's not like it's you know. Uh, I mean, he yeah. is an all star. He's a hell of a player. And someone said the other day he might be in the Hall of Fame at the end of this career. I mean, he's that good of a player, and he's put up those numbers. But uh, I thought Rosie's point was was amazing. Like John Tavares is just sitting there, dude. You're the fucking captain of the yeah. team. Like, stand up and say something. Like the the bench is sitting there. Yeah. And I think you know Rosie Rosie went nuts, and and I I don't know how he has it to be honest with you because I, I know yeah. as you know watching him all these years, you know being with the Flyers, and you know he'd do stupid shit. You're like someone like someone going to do something, but then maybe he does have guys protecting him too. Like he had 30 for years. I don't know. Exactly. You know, Luch, Luch Chara, is back. Luch, yeah, Luch right, is yeah. back. I mean, I, I don't know how he has it. I really don't. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> That's a I great question it. because <laughs> I'm sure he's not the only person asking themselves this, that, you know, that same question. Uh, I agree. Yeah, he's dodged some bullets. Uh, somehow, like a cat, got you know, hundred lives <laughs> yeah, here. And, got... uh, keeps going strong. You know, it's like yeah. you know, I, I like his game. I like I like where he's. Uh, I like how he gets involved, but some of that dirty stuff, I just like, geez, yeah. it's, it's just, you know, it's just uh, it's unfortunate that stuff happens. But um, yeah. yeah, great, great question, and uh, we really feel is. the same way. I'm not sure how it, how he's been able to pull this off this long, but. Moving on, Jersey yeah. Mike on Twitter asks, I know you appreciate all your guests and most are friends, but as you look back on all your episodes, is there one guy su- who surprised you with an answer or you really learned something new about them? Thanks. This is Cheyenne. 
Oh, Shan. Bass, what do you got there? Uh, first of all, hello, Shan and uh, Mike. They have a Here's cool little show they do. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They interview a lot of guys. They're awesome. Um, I was fortunate enough to get interviewed by them one time. And um, hello, that's a great question. One that I think I need like a few days to think about because yeah, no, um, lucky enough for us, we've you know we've had 133 episodes and there's been so many things that I think I've learned about some guys, even guys we knew. Um, I, man, that is such a good question. Uh, one thing that popped out in my head right away was, was, was Carter. I, uh, well, I know him and that, that he like, watches. That. Yeah. He watches, uh, what's her name? Ellen. Uh, Ellen. Yeah. I never knew that. I've known this guy since he was 18 and, you know, spent a lot of time with him and I had no idea it's, that was that made me laugh that how day. could you I, know that and he it's had that, that one in his back pocket well, how would i not know like he, <laughs> yeah. i can't believe he never said oh my god i was watching you know watching alan today or something you know but uh that that really surprised me but i'm sure there's there's been a million other ones but uh, it's a great great question do you can anything pop out in your mind yeah i mean that's a tough one um so many <laughs> episodes and so many different stories um uh, and i probably need some more time to think about it but um no, there was just just one that uh, pops up with with Joel Faraby, um, not really knowing the guy that well and understanding you know his psychology. But remember, he talked about uh, how, how much he appreciates the, the fights and, and yeah. fighting in hockey, yeah. which I was like yeah. kind of surprised that you know not that he was like a soft guy by any means, but just like yeah. his attitude towards and how much he appreciated it kind of threw me off and uh, definitely definitely surprised. But we'll have to yeah. dig a little I, deeper too, maybe find a yeah. couple more. Yeah, it's um. It's funny because, you know, when he did say that, obviously I was there when he was, when he made, when he was on the team and I do remember him fighting. I actually remember him fighting Marcus Felino, and I'm like, Oh mm. no. And I remember Stewie, um, saying to him, he kind of let you off the hook there, but I'm like, well, he outweighs about 50 pounds. Yeah, I know. But, right. but, but Beezer Showed ran out. in there for a player. He mm-hmm. went in there for a teammate and you can't fault him. And, and you know, Marcus caught, did let him off the hook a little bit, but but it was kind of funny. Stewie said, and Stewie and Beezer are tight. He just said, "Man, I wouldn't have let you off the hook." You know, I would. I, I probably would have finished. You know, but yeah, uh, right. it did surprise me. But I, I will say this about Beezer: I thought the way he played, now Hardy played. I, I thought for a newer age kid coming in, like this new era of player. Yeah. Um. Not that I'm not trying to say they're soft, but like he's an old school soul yeah he, he is old, yeah old way sure. he plays I and uh, he has shown since then he will drop the mitts um but you're right that's a that's a great one um him saying that that uh that did kind of surprise me yeah and we'll that's have to dig a little thing. deeper and think about this a little more because there's probably a bunch more of the yeah yeah, yeah for I'm sure thinking about but uh great 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 question appreciate yep. it and then the last one here mike pole on twitter wants to know do you feel torts is devaluing frost with the recent benchings I mean, we talked about this a few times now what are your thoughts you're not i i mean i really do i don't know what i'm missing um in his game maybe i'm just totally wrong i i don't know it's just my opinion i don't give a shit what anybody thinks uh i think he's definitely is i think he's an nhl player and i think when he has been and he's he's played well i know he doesn't have any points that doesn't help the cause um but i i definitely you know maybe just torch is just trying to get him going um, I thought when we went to the game, I thought he looked great. I mean, mm-hmm. he was making plays. Um, and again, you played the game. You maybe can answer that a little better, but I, I, I love Frosty's game. I really do. I think he's an NHL player. Yeah. I mean, I agree. And I, and I do think it's devaluing. I just don't think torts really gives two shits, you know? I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a, it's a business. And if he thinks that, he doesn't deserve to be in the lineup. I, I don't think that he really cares about the the outcome, you know, for him personally. I think it's right. Someone's got to sit out, and yeah. you know, it's it lands up being frosty right now. Um, is it devaluing him? Probably. It's never good when you're sitting out of the lineup. But um, you know, if you're asked towards that question, I'm sure he'd be like, "This is for the best of the team," and he's not performing enough. And and that's the bottom line. But um, do I think he's devaluing him? For sure, it is. I mean, anytime you're sitting out, it's no, it's no good for, <laughs> it's yeah. no good for uh, your situation. But uh, I'd like to think, you know, coming back in the lineup, um, <laughs> that he he needs to respond in, in in a way that 
he stays in the lineup and that he's never going to be pulled up back out of the lineup, you know? So yeah, it's a challenge, you know, it's a challenge for him. And, you know, I think every young player gets into these situations where they're, they're challenged by their coach and they're expected to raise their level of play. And this is that opportunity. I know he's been in and out kind of a few times and we've, we've had this conversation before, but um, a quick way to, you know, increase your value is to come back in the lineup and, you know, tear it up and, you know, earn more yeah. minutes and, and play and play and play in uh, more situations. So, yeah, that's up. That's up to him. You know, he is an NHL player, and he just yeah. needs to you know find his game and get that confidence back. You know, when you talk to him last year, he was just about confidence. He felt confident, and he's yeah. not. I mean, uh, obviously not. We're out of the lineup. Uh, you know, um, this much. So, wish him the best, and hopefully, comes yeah. back and tears it up. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I do too. He's a he's a good player. Yeah, and I think he's he's at that age too, where the hope is right now. What another two years? We're going to be right there. He's he's not going to be too old, right? You know, he's going to hopefully be right in his prime if he if he's able to. Hopefully, he's here and yeah, exactly. you know, things start going his way. Um, so all the best, Frosty boy. Yeah, love you, man. You'll be, you'll be um, all right. Thank you guys for the questions, man. Yeah, great questions. Thank everyone for the questions. Yeah. And that's a wrap, Nast. That's it? That's it. I don't want to end it. I just want to keep going. We'll a lot of hockey. A lot of hockey. <laughs> a lot of hockey. Just, just talk to yourself. You're yawning. You're, I'll just sit here and talk. Yeah, keep the recording going. You can stay there. Yeah. I'll say my goodbyes. Episode You'll 133 in the books. <laughs> it's in the books. Make sure you guys go to all of our platforms. Please like, comment. Um, share it, whatever you want to do. We appreciate all of you. Until next week, episode 134. Stay safe, knuckleheads. See ya.